Hello everybody and welcome to campaign three of High Rollers! It's here! Woo! It's happening! I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Uh, I am the Dungeon Master here on High Rollers. We've been doing it for a while now, and you're about to join us for a fresh new story, new world, new setting, new characters. And we've got a ton of great stuff to show you. And we're gonna get jumping, we're gonna jump straight in. We're gonna introduce you to the players and then show you our wonderful new intro. Speaking of players, <gasps> We have Rhiannon Frost. Hello. We have Chris Trot. Hello. We have Kim Richards. Hello. Oh, it's all the fan oh, favorites. Oh, We're all here. Yeah. <laughs> And then on the other side, we have Tom Hazel, Hello. we have Katie Morrison, Woo. the completed form of the fan favourites. Everyone's here! <laughs> nice backpedaling. I had to do it in parts, I had to do it in parts. No, thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you're going to enjoy, us, enjoy this wonderful new adventure uh, that we're going to be doing for Campaign 3. Um, and there's no announcements because we want to jump straight into it and yes. show off yeah. something very special. Uh, if you could please run our brand new intro. Althea, a world reborn from ash and dust. A world surrounded by an eternity of war waged between the planar realms. A world of many people, places, cultures, and nations. A world of secrets, a world of stories. And in the Dragon Empire, Stories can have great power. The ballad of a knight can stir the soul to courage. The tragedy of a tyrant can damn an entire nation. Some stories begin in grand places, upon a throne of obsidian carved by hands older than gods, or among the stars where the divine saints dwell. But this story this story begins in the humble village of Burnell. Nestled between the Obsidian Mountains and the Blades of the Empress, the North Vale of Cauldra is a bountiful land of sloping forested hills and ripe vineyards nursed from the volcanic soil of the Red Dragon's province. Burnell sits at the edge of a swift winding river and the lush hilly forests of the valley. It is a trader's stop that has grown and swollen over the years as merchants and travelers long for a place to rest as they journey along the Imperial Highway. Today is the eighth day of Stormfall's mid-moon. It is a market day. And as the fortress of Pyrus, the great golden sun that brings warmth and light to Althea rises to begin her vigil over the world, before most others are even awake, some life stirs in this quiet village still. We see a small pond steaming ever so slightly in the morning mist. A water feature cascading down, carved from beautiful stone and painted in bright colors and intricate designs. With a long bench sitting along it, allowing travelers and locals to soak their feet in the warm geothermal springs. There's no pair of boots sat beside the bench this time because a pair of black furred paws dangle close by. 
Kim, could you please tell us who you are playing and describe them for us, please? No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Why did I have to go first? Okay. Uh, so I am playing Grafath, um, or Graf for short, and he is a Leonin. Um, well, he's a Leonin, but in this world they're called Wild Hearts. Um, so you see before you a large black furred, but also speckled with white, uh, lion like creature. He's got beautiful white mane and facial hair that's incredibly curly. Um, if you imagine like uh, Chinese guardian lions, that kind of curls everywhere. He's dressed quite simply. Um, you know, very simple black and blue robes um, and wraps around him. But he does have a short cape of overlapping furs, um, uh, hide and furs, kind of protect his shoulders. Um, he's sat on this bench and he's got a little pipe that he's kind of puffing in the early morning air. And he's kind of humming tunelessly to himself. <laughs> and next to him as well is a kind of crooked, gnarled staff, um, quite natural. And on the top of it is a green, flickering, illusory bird. Um, you know, quite... A, uh, it, it looks green, but it's quite long and sleek, a long beak. And he's just, every now and again, he's just staring at it, and there's a very far-off look in his eyes. Like, he's he's physically here on this bench by this pond, but he, in his head, he's back thinking somewhere else. Mm. Graf has been here for a while, kind of watching the sun, the fortress of Pyrus rising and cascading uh, the light down upon the world. And looking out, you are just outside the wooden walls of Burnell, uh, just down the hill, and you're kind of at this lovely kind of like little natural geothermal spring. It looks like a little hot spot that maybe locals come to to sort of like rest their, soak their feet and enjoy the warm water. It's very shallow. It's like more of a pond, really. And you look out, and just in front of you, a little bit ways beyond the pond, you see a stone church, a little temple, something that a local village would have, nothing grand, stone effigies of some of the saints and of the great uh, scions, Melia and Pyrus, carved in the top with a little bell tower um, that still hasn't sounded yet uh, as the sun begins to rise. There's patches of wildflowers dot, uh, dotted here and there, and behind the church you see forests beginning to spread out, rising up into the hills, and then the backdrop of these sleek, black, jagged mountains, all forming the back uh, uh, view that you can see behind you, uh, beyond this church. And you're lost in thoughts, thinking of home, thinking about your birds, thinking about what the village may be up to, what your family may be up to, uh, and just lost in this days-like state. Something draws you out of it, though, as you begin to hear footsteps. Uh, you hear a kind of wooden thunk and a clunk um, and a kind of scattering of feet and then a sort of, oh, uh, as a zombie, almost in surprise, uh, as you see that beside the church there is this tiny little stone cottage kind of attached to it and uh, you look up and see a little halfling wearing black and white robes um, <clears throat> a little symbol of a uh, crescent moon with a, a star sort of attached to it um, and uh, uh, he kind of looks up, he's got short, curly brown hair, very kind of traditional hobbit halfling you kind of look to him, um, little mutton chops down the sides. Um, he's maybe middle-aged, and he looks over to you and he's like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry, I, I, it's a bit early to see you, I thought normally I'm the earliest one up in the village. Uh, hello, hello there, hello! And he looks over to you um, and sort of calls out to you. Good morning, Father. A fine morning yet. Oh, uh, yes, a very fine morning, yes. Uh, I suppose we've seen the uh, last of the rain and, and hopefully we're going to see brighter weather. I, I, I don't recognise you, my, my good fellow. Uh, are you a visitor here to the village? I, I arrived last night with a few friends. Oh, oh, wonderful. Oh, oh yes, I did hear about something about some uh, visitors right there. Well, and he, he kind of like walks his way up to you and uh, he, he offers his little hand to you. He's like, oh, uh, Reverend Arthur T. Thistle, uh, lovely to meet you. Uh, and he kind of offers his hand up Being to a you. Firm handshake. Like, there's a big pull. Oh, and my. A firm handshake. Yes, oh, my. Quite good. Oh, crushing. <laughs> oh, quite, quite the grip you've got 
there. Uh, hello. Oh, well, let me, um, if you've not had the, the warm welcome of, of Burnell, let me be the first to welcome you to our little humble community that we have here. Um, uh, are you staying long? What, what is your business? Are you visiting the village or just on your way? Uh, I personally am hoping to go on my way. Uh, I, I only stayed here last night, you know, needing a place because it's da very dangerous to travel at night around here. Oh, oh, yes, yes. I mean, I, I've lived in the village uh, my whole life. Um, uh, maybe travelled uh, off to Ash and Rest to the south once or twice for a little bit of business and, and to meet the priest, the high priest there, but uh, nothing much. I'm uh, sort of born and raised here, really. I, uh, the roads and things like that are oh, a bit too scary for me, I'm afraid. Just a humble little priest. But no, oh, me and my wife, and he kind of gestures back, no, we've been here for a long time. Oh, uh, whatever. Um, well, uh, uh, you've just been sort of sat here this morning in, enjoying the lovely sun, it seems. Aye, sun, well, the warmth is a little bit new to me, have experiencing waters that are warm and not freezing cold. Oh, it's oh. quite the novelty. Oh, oh, and he kind of looks at you for a moment, and he kind of, as you're saying this, he's just like, oh, you're, are you from Iceheart? Aye. Oh, my goodness, what a, what a journey that you've made to be here. What a long way you've come. Um, Oh, well, and he says, like, well, um, do you wish to keep sitting here? Or I, I'm popping up into the village. I believe market's just about to begin. I could show you around a little bit if you like. Uh, there's a delightful place. They do wonderful little, little, um, like, dried fruits with a little bit of sugar. It's a lovely way to start your morning. I, the wife tells me I shouldn't, but I always sneak one in as I'm heading up into the village. But would you care to join me? That sounds delightful. I'll join you. Oh, yes, come on in, in, in. He'll sort of like, oh, come along. Uh, and he starts leading you up. You know, it's, uh, Burnell's had a rather interesting history. We've got a little bit of things, but the Duke is very proud of this place. He thinks it's going to be a, the next big town. We think we can really... He's leading you up, uh, up the hill, back up into the village where you can see the wooden uh, gates have been opened. There's a few surly, maybe a little hungover or tired guards kind of cast there. But as soon as they see the Reverend, they just, you know, no issues. You, you walk straight in. And you begin to make your way in, seeing that there is this large market square, dozens of these little stands and stalls with brightly colored canvases and, and things like that being set up. And we watch as Gruff and the Reverend make their way and he leads you to this little thing and begins buying you this little sweet treat. Um, but as we do, almost imagining like a like a cinematic, we see the camera passing over. Um, and as you make your way back up and the, the market's being set up, we see one of these little market stalls, really just a brightly colored, very worn looking blanket rolled out on the ground with a little wooden chair, like a stool, uh, and uh, an elderly dwarven woman, very old. And you can see that one of her legs uh, is almost entirely turned to this, uh, the skin underneath from her skirt below, you can see that the flesh has become this silvery metal. And you can see that there are all these kind of growths of metal coming out of her neck. They've been wor worked into spikes and chains and things like that, but she looks very elderly. And she's laying out these little stone carvings. Um, and we see a large, uh, slightly gray with a touch of purple hand holding one of these little statues um, as the dwarven woman seems to be speaking to them. And Chris Trot, I would like you to tell us who you're playing and describe them to us, please. I am playing Rowan, which is a great name, doesn't mm -hmm. need a surname. And I am a Jotnir, which means half giant. So I'm a very big boy, uh, very big indeed. It's got unusual skin color for a half giant. Not usually seen having like this pale gray tone to him. And also the most interesting feature are his arms. So his hands kind of gradient to a dark, um, darker color with some interesting intricate blue patterns that spiral up from his hands. Um, other than that, he wears quite plain clothing. He's got a nice big scarf with a lovely green pattern on it. And he also has a, a leather jerkin of some kind. Seems like he's relatively athletic looking. Uh, he does like to travel quite a lot. And he's wearing sandals because he loves comfort. And we would see on his back as well, this beautiful engraved instrument. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, that as well? Yes, the lute is extremely exquisite looking, almost like a masterpiece. Um, it's just beautiful. Uh, it doesn't match <laughs> Rowan's aesthetic in any way because he's quite simple looking. So um, it looks a little out of place, but either way, it draws attention, that's for sure. Great. 
Rowan, you've been traveling uh, around and you woke up early this morning, the marketplace uh, began to explore something that you do quite frequently, kind of wandering around, looking, listening. And as you did, you began to hear it, you began to hear that harmony, those vibrations, that resonance that so often draws your attention. And as you make your way and you pick up this little carved statue, there's a slight element of a, a, a feminine figure, a kind of warrior-like figure, um, sword, maybe one wing, but it's, it's all kind of very subtle, keeping the natural shape of the stone and just delicately carving with these little details and carvings and runes. And as you hold it, you hear it like the song of a mother to a child, uh, the song of growth, the song of molding and shaping and, and uh, learning and, and teaching, all kind of merges together in this. And as you hold it, it just fills you. And the elderly dwarven was like, oh, do you like that one? Uh, a single tear builds up in the corner <laughs> of Rowan's eyes and spills down his gray cheek. Oh, I hope. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. It's telling, sorry, one second, it's just telling me a story. <laughs> oh, thank oh. Thank you. How much? Well, she looks at you curiously and, and sort of like, oh, 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 I normally sell them for a silver piece. A silver piece? Yes, yes. For this masterpiece. Oh, no. Thank you so much. Oh, my masterpiece days are long behind me, kind young man. That's very sweet of you to say, but no, uh, my hands, and, and you see as she hands up, three of her fingers have turned to that same silvery metal, and, and it's almost growing down her hand. Um, and you can see there are almost patches on her neck which have the same thing. Um, and she said, oh, my hands don't work the way they used to, so I do what I can and... and I disagree. The oh. work you have here, you've chosen so well. It's very sweet of you, thank it you. It really is beautiful. Thank you so much for introducing me to this. Oh, you are most welcome. Yes, that's a silver piece. And silver are, are, piece. Are you, are you, 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 you are not from here, are you traveling? No, uh, I've made my way. I'm on a journey of my own, you see, much oh. like this rock. Oh, I... Yes, this rock has gone on a long journey, it seems. Well, it, it's a day to the mines, I suppose. <laughs> yes, yes, a journey. It must come with me. Well, it... <laughs> And she kind of holds it on her I hand. I wish to go on a long journey. I have much more to discover. Oh, yes, well, really? The Burnell seems exquisite. Oh, thank you, yes. It's a, it's a quiet little town. She is still holding her hand out for her oh. silver piece. <laughs> <laughs> Please excuse me. Oh, thank you. One silver. She'll take it from you. Um, mark that silver piece off. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she starts, she just says, like, oh, you say you're traveling. Uh, are you heading somewhere in particular, uh, to the south, perhaps, or? Wherever the wind takes me. Oh, I see. You're, you're sort of wanderer. I imagine you've been to many places and have many tales to tell. I have many tales to tell, oh. hence the lute. Oh, oh, uh, forgive me, my eyes. Uh, you are a musician. Yes, I'm more of a vessel. Oh, interesting. I consider myself a vessel for the stones as well. I know. Can I have a look at this one? Of course you can. Please. You know, I I build many of the, the buildings around here. I I cut the, the flagstones and I did. Oh yes, I, I've Looks lived around, a long time. Just in absorbed in awe and wonder. Yeah, and you look around outside the market square, the, the buildings that kind of circle the market square here in Burnell are the richer, and for a village, they're very ornate and they look very well built and larger than you'd expect. And they have these solid stone ground levels and foundations cut from these perfectly carved, beautiful flags to, uh, you know, main cornerstones and things like that with little details. And you can see that it's almost like little chiseled and engraved flowers and vines and, and you can see little dragons and, and knights are carved into the stones themselves. Very subtle here and there, but beautiful work. Oh, oh my. And it's she... Just a lot to take in. Oh, uh, would you like to hear more about... Yes. Uh, oh, yes. And, and I, she, um, I go and find a stool. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you as you wander, and in fact, you see um, that outside one of these beautiful buildings, an inn. Um, you see that outside they've got a couple of like uh, probably like for horses or for like you know stable boys and things like that to sit on whilst the drakes are being brought in and mounted. There is a little stool, and you just are like, oh, I can just go borrow one of those. And uh, you walk over, you pick up the stool, and as you do, our camera is going to pass from you as you begin making your way back to the old lady, and the camera now. As the door of the inn opens and we see um, the one of the, maybe an innkeeper or a member of staff that works there, a halfling woman with sort of um, pink dyed hair that's all tied up in a bun, uh, she opens the door and is sweeping some dirt out onto the street. But as it does, we kind of move in and we follow her as she closes the door. She sets the broom to the side and she begins making her way upstairs, picking up a few things here and there. Uh, ready to do some cleaning. She makes her way up this beautiful uh, coiled staircase, which is engraved to look like roses and thorns and things like that. And as she does, she begins making her way down a long, beautiful, very lavish, very rich, dark wood corridor with these red, uh, dark drapes. And as she does, we pass one of these doors and we face through it. What we see is a robed figure, like a friar or a monk, holding back his hands or their hands, maybe still obscured by these thick robes, but holding back this long black hair. And then behind that, you know, the, the person with the hair is knelt down in front of an altar, a beautiful altar with maybe white stone or ivory or bone engraved uh, figures of a very regal looking man sat on a throne and the throne is made of, of bones and there are these red gemstones built into it. And Re, could you please tell us who you're playing and describe your character? So I am playing Ophelia Delarosa, sister Ophelia Delarosa of the House of Blood. And Ophelia is knelt on the floor in front of this altar in her crimson red ceremonial dress with dark, sort of dark metal armor intricately put together on the top. She has these really like intense spikes like boots that come up to her beyond her knees, this chest plate, which has got bones and sort of wings and scales <laughs> sort of <laughs> oh, no. chiseled into the surface. And uh, she has like, very sort of pale greyish skin with pointy ears and she's knelt down very very straight very well postured and she's looking intently ahead at this altar as she dips a little horsehair brush in the table in front of her into a little pot of red crimson face paint and she has her eyes closed and she is just slathering this paint across her eyes across her forehead just to just below her eyes and she does it with such precision, like she knows she's done this hundreds of thousands of times. She can do it with her eyes closed. She knows exactly the motions, exactly how to do it. And she's just humming to herself in a monotonous tone. And she does it. And then these words come out. For the house we pray, in their name we surrender, our bodies, our binds, our devotion, our deliverance. Their will be done by hands unfaltering, their mission shared by hearts united. Flesh for the mortal, blood for the eternal, in his grace. And she puts the brush down in the pot. When you put the... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> we didn't hear that. <laughs> when the brush returns to the pot, you feel the robed hands finish their work braiding, finishing your hair in the traditional style, as is always done perfectly. Um, Percival's hands never faltering even once, as they have never done since they have been in your service. Um, silently, they step back, giving you plenty of space to stand, um, their head bowed, waiting for your next command. Um, and you find that, yes, it is, you know, the morning sun is now rising, you can hear the sounds of the village, this market coming to life, and you hear the sounds of people, you hear the chatter of village life, you hear uh, distant conversation, you can hear the clattering of people within the inn, maybe, being served their breakfast and things like that. Um, Thank you, Percival. <laughs> I suppose today we should venture down into the village, maybe try and learn some more about what these people do here. Ever silent, Percival just stands in adoration and reverence. There comes a knock at the door. Oh, hello, come in. Oh, 
moment, you hear the uh, door open, uh, and standing there is uh, a man, a human man. He has like a very kind of thick kind of Ned Flanders moustache almost, but he has this kind of very sleek, slicked back dark hair. He's quite handsome, um, but he's a little bit older, um, and you can see that he uh, stands awkwardly and he has a cane uh, in his hand as well. Um, but as he opens the door, uh, you would recognize this man. He's the innkeeper of the inn that you're staying, the Lord, the Lordly Reigns, um, and this is Raoul Tovas, and you actually met him last night. Uh, he served you your room and made sure you had everything you need, uh, and he uh, is just like, oh, I'm so sorry to disturb you is Sister Ophelia, wasn't it? That's, that's correct, yes, thank you. Uh, I wanted to uh, see if you needed anything, but also, uh, as I understand, you're, it's your, you're visiting here in, in the village in Burnell. Yes, yes, we are. Well, I thought I have some rounds to do uh, at the market. Uh, we have to pick up some supplies. I, th I thought I would offer to take you around and, and introduce you to people or, or you know, tell you a bit about the village if that is something of it that interests you. That's very kind. Thank you very much. Well, it's the least I can do. Your, your story is, was very interesting. Uh, what you told me about where you're from. I, I'm just very curious to learn more about you, and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to show you more about uh, Caldera and our village. Oh, and I, you. Oh. I to learn more about what you do here, and obviously you're slaving away behind that desk. There must be <laughs> more to this than meets the eye, I'm sure. Oh, well, I mean, I, I very much, and he kind of taps his leg. I'm afraid I don't do much of the manual labor these days. We have uh, staff that we employ here, but um, no, I, uh, I uh, mainly speak with guests such as yourself, make sure they have everything they need. I, I make deals with people in the town and the city, make sure we have our supplies. I'm, I'm, my job is very uh, uninteresting, I'm afraid. My, uh, but it is a quiet life, which is very different to my old one, uh, which is, is nice. That's uh, okay. Jobs are very unusual things where I'm from. But really, I'm curious to learn more. Uh, um, is your um, uh, friend a companion? And he gestures to Percival. Black friar robes just stood. No, no face visible, no hands visible. Just this dark shape, um, and he just is. is uh, do they? Uh, I, is oh, everything all right? This sir? is Percival. He is my most trusted assistant. I see. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your stay, Percival. Silence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Raoul will say, "Well, if, uh, come with me," and then he'll say, "I'll, I'll just you around." The market's market day, so it's quite busy. But you often meet locals. They come in from the farms and and various places, and uh, we you know trade goods and things like that. Just things that the village needs. We uh, we have a few traders that come by, but uh, it should be a fairly quiet one. But uh, I can introduce you to a few people and, and show you around if that's something that interests you. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, of course. She, of she course. has a smile and flashes a little pointy tooth. Just. I'm going to rolls. <laughs> <laughs> he almost that has no effect. Like there's there's just no reaction to that. It, he just sort of like nods his head. Um, he turns and uh, yeah, walking with a very clear limp. Um, you can see he kind of leads you down. He heads down the stairs and yeah, if you follow you and Percival, make your way out of the. Come, inn Percival. With him. <laughs> he follows in behind you. Um, you make your way round. Uh, Raoul uh, will in sort of engage you in a little light conversation, the kind of you know typical stuff that you might do. He points out various things. Um, he gestures to a couple of places around the town. Um, points out you do see a uh, uh, some of the figures that you maybe saw last night uh, when you arrived. You see the he points out the reverend, the local priest of uh, the faith here, um, speaking to what appears to be the uh, the wild heart, the large lion like wild heart that you saw briefly. But you. It's very passing um, as you guys make your way around. Um, and yeah, just idle chit chat as you go about the business and he begins showing you around the marketplace. As you do, you pass a little stone cottage tucked right at the side of the, the city's wooden walls. Um, and it has like an elaborate garden attached to this little stone cottage. It's maybe big enough for like three or four people the house, but the garden's quite expansive. You know, flower beds and little vegetable patches and even a couple of trees, including an orange tree, which is just beginning to like properly blossom. And you can see the little oranges beginning to grow and this beautiful citrus scent fills the air. And as you pass, Raoul takes you on, but the camera is going to stay with that garden as it begins to pan around and we see this lovely little orange tree and as the sun is rising and casting shadows we see the shadow the silhouette of a little figure um, and we begin to hear a voice almost as if talking to herself um, and as we kind of round the tree now seeing the market square framed behind it we see all the flowers and the bushes and 
Katie, would you like to tell us who you're playing and describe your character? <laughs> uh, yes, so I am playing Daisy Thistleheart. Um, she is probably about five foot two. She's um, sitting under a tree with um, a little notebook and she's sort of dressed, um, think like cottage core, hobbit core vibes. <laughs> hobbit core Halloween is what we kind of called it. Um, she's got um, a black bodice, like a corseted bodice with some orange ribbons tying it on the shoulders um, and floral embroidery all over it and then sort of a burnt orange long skirt and some little brown boots and frilly socks. She's got um, big, beautiful, bouncy ringlet curls, um, uh, blonde, that uh, goes down to about mid-back level for her. And yeah, she's she's just sitting there with a little notebook um, and appears to be sort of doodling in it. She's, she's drawing. Mm -hmm. um. And uh, as you are doodling, the sketch kind of coming to life and your your nostrils full of the scent of that little citrus as the orange tree's growing, the wildflowers around you, you can hear the sounds of the bustling market beginning to come to life as people are waking up and joining in. Um, but you also hear another voice, which you're very familiar with, um, as uh, you hear a little one. Wasn't that music last night wonderful? It was. It was really unusual, actually. I don't think I've heard anyone make a song about... What was it? Pebbles. He said it was about pebbles. He did seem a rather strange sort. Yes, but I think he's quite friendly, though. He seemed nice. Many of the people here do seem that way, yes. I do wish that there had been some lyrics for us to learn, but perhaps we can think of some. Maybe I could, maybe I could give him some, some advice. Maybe we could, we could write something and give it to him and see if he likes it. And then next time he performs it, maybe he can put the lyrics into it. Well, I... You might need to take care of that. I've I've never thought of lyrics myself before. We hmm. were always taught them. Songs about pebbles. I'll have a think. What rhymes with pebble? I'll you, think on it. I'll, I'll get back to you. you it will that. happen. I know, I know. And you just hear a kind of like little, you sense delight and mirth and this kind of amusement uh, within you. Um, and as you do, you but then you do hear, you do hear your friend kind of say like, oh, I think someone is approaching. Um, and you hear the door of the cottage, of which the garden you have just sort of let yourself into and sat behind the tree, because it was a lovely little spot. Um, and you hear the door of the cottage open. You hear a woman's voice. Uh, All right, okay, mum, yes, I know, I know. Just look after dad, like, you'll be fine. I'll be back soon, all right? I just need to go and check on things. Um, and she shuts the door, and then she, you hear some footsteps, like almost like kind of making their way, and then just dead stop. And <laughs> You look over and stood outside the cottage, kind of looking into the garden, is a broad shoulders, quite strong, athletic physique, human woman. Uh, she's got um, brown hair. She's probably in like her middle, like kind of early 40s. There's maybe a little touch of gray, just a streak in it. It's all tied up into like a tight bun. Um, and uh, you can see that she's got a big, heavy, like burlap cloth sack over her shoulders. And she looks over and she's like, that's my garden, you know. You, I, I don't <laughs> mind you sitting it. You've not, you've not tr stood on anything, have you? You just see Daisy in her book. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's just it was such a pretty garden. So I thought I'd do my little morning doodle here. I, I promise I didn't step on any flowers. I didn't. Okay. I would never do that. All right, that's fine. As, hey, as long as you didn't ruin anything, that's fine. I drew one. Look. And she'll show the dude. So you like move going. up and like kind of show. She kind of looks at me. It's like oh, that, you're really good. Um, what, did you have a friend here? I heard you talking to somebody. Uh, so they they left. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you're not from here, are you? And she kind of looks. At you. I've never seen you around before. Nearby, Goodvine. Oh. I've been oh. Talking about though. So. Oh yeah, I know Goodvine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, you just visiting? Is it like are you you you're here for anything or just, just passing through? Just oh. just. Okay. Stayed for a night. Oh, okay. What's your name, kid? Daisy. Oh, I'm Marion. Uh, well, have it. Enjoy, enjoy Burnell. It's not a lot going on, but enjoy it where you can. And Thanks for the tree. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no worries. Help yourself. Like you know, I don't think any of them are ripe yet. But if you want to take an orange, take an orange. And she kind of makes her way down. Daisy's probably already got an like orange. A sack full of oranges. <laughs> Just like yeah. had behind her back the whole time. Like. Yeah. 
But now I have permission. That's fine. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you just uh, watch her. She, this woman just sort of like, yeah, like gives you like a little sort of wave um, and just begins making her way out of the village uh, as if going on some chores or something like that. Um, you do hear some movement still in the house. Um, you kind of hear like an older woman's voice like, I oh, yes, no, it'll be fine. Kind of like mutterings and things like that as if people are still inside. Um, and yeah, you, you just, you know, uh, return to maybe sketching or you can see the markets filling up um, and you begin to sweat, like smell fresh bread and you begin to see like the bustling of things and it's quite a few people you know moving around you see a few jingling pouches here and there and you, know, you just kind of see the the town coming to life um and you do see that musician that you saw last night the tall very very tall man with the the gray skin um it seems to be sitting talking to an older dwarven looking woman um and uh, you remember like sort of you know your friend sort of talking about the music and you see the market square in front of you kind of thing but as you do we kind of follow that woman that had come out and was speaking to Marion. Um, we follow her for a little bit as she begins making her way out of the village, and we pass by the village's second inn. Much more down to earth, a bit more quaint. Little flower boxes outside each window filled with these pink pe uh, peony flowers. Peony? Peony flowers. Uh, peony. Uh, and you see. Um, very rustic little approach and you can see it's already busy downstairs appears to have like a tavern there are tables people are getting breakfast uh staff are rushing around um and we move up upstairs into a set of bedrooms and we fall upon the form of somebody sleeping in one of these rooms but it is clear that it is not a restful sleep their eyes flick and flutter beneath their eyelids. Sweat pours down their face, their body twitches. Tom, can you tell us who you're playing and describe your character for us, please? <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, I think looking upon this character for the first time, you would be excused for thinking he is an elf, but as he moves in his sleep state, uh, you see the light glistening upon golden scales, uh, up and down his arms, uh, around his eyes, almost a crown of horns, I suppose, uh, at the top of his head. Um, I suppose you would see... Is he wearing his usual uniform now? Yeah. Sure. He's <laughs> got uh, quite simple uh, grey-brown sort of clothing, but accented slightly with golden sashes, some uh, golden sigils across tabards and things like that. Um, and he is, he also has a big gold tail too. Should have mentioned that one, that's a big giveaway. <laughs> um, but that's under the cover right now. Sure. You can't see it. Um, maybe the, as he twitches and the cover twists, we see a glimpse of the tail snaking out very yeah. briefly. Um, and I, I do, do, I, do I wake up? Am I, uh, what's, what's happening to me? <laughs> You're already surprising me. <laughs> when Xanthius came to bed, you collapsed. Not even so tired and exhausted, not even undressing, just falling into this bed, a moment of safety, a moment of rest and recuperation from your hasty and exhausting flight uh, from the city. You are in a room surrounded by a dark void. You can see no walls, but it feels claustrophobic and tight. There is a wooden pedestal, well made and decorated with engravings and gold inlays, and it stands in the center of this room, lit by an unseen, unseen source of light, the only light in this place. Atop the pedestal is something covered in a velvet cloth, and the darkness, almost like walls closing in, is whispering, laughing, you begin to see faces and teeth and eyes in that darkness. Oh no. <laughs> oh, it, it has, you don't remember exactly, you know that you're meant to be here, you're meant to get something or help someone, you, you can't quite remember, but you feel almost pressed in, like something's pushing you towards that light and that, that thing in the pedestal. I think I might have messed up my boy too hard, guys. <laughs> um, he is on his face, that sweat still there. He is 
terrified and he's turning and recoiling away from these whispers and he smiles. Um, but when he locks eyes on this pedestal, he shouts out, what is it you want from me? What, what do you want me to do? When you speak, you see that a figure emerges on the opposite side to this pedestal from the darkness. A figure, they're shrouded in a cloak, but there is something about them familiar. And you think they're a friend. And they step into the light and they take the thing on the pedestal. And as they touch it, the faces and the eyes and the mouths of the darkness hiss. And they press in. And as they rush towards the pedestal, you are pushed forward with it. What does Anthea do? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> Roll another character. <laughs> is, is this brand new to Xanthius? Is this? Is this? There is a there is a familiarity about all of this. This feels <laughs> this like you before. should know what this is. Oh my God. You sh you feel like you should know what it is, but you can't remember. I messed up my boy, guys. Oh <laughs> I mean, if I'm if I'm pulled towards it, there's a, there's a I want to resist. Like something's pushing you from behind, like that darkness, the mouth, it's rushing you towards it. I want to turn and run. You turn to run and as you do, the mouths almost like sink and bite and push you around and then suddenly you are at that pedestal and the darkness is crawling over you and you can see this figure, this, this friend, you know they're a friend and are they the one you came here to help? Is this the thing you're, you're meant to to find and they're holding it and you see that the darkness and the mouse are doing the same thing to them and they're, they're shrieking in pain and they're holding out this object. <laughs> I, 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 I am, I think Xanthius, just like me, would just be just locked in. He, he He's tried to resist. So in your panic, in that moment of not knowing what to do, as the darkness pushes you, you, you kind of twist and your body and your hands reach out and they fall upon the object. And as they do, the figure, the other figure, they're your friend, but now they're angry, they're hissing too. Nah, man! And as your hands touch it, the both of you gripping it all at once, something snaps. And there is an explosion of light and fire and you feel pain and as you do you scream and as your mouth opens the darkness pours in crawling inside you i need you to roll a d4 for me a d4 oh my god what, what is, what is your character is okay i should clarify i know the cause of this this is all mark <laughs> he's already used something to backstab me <laughs> a d4 first roll okay you were the dark one. A, a four i don't know if Four's good, four. Uh, you rolled a four, yeah? Yeah. All right. Can you make a constitution saving throw for me, please? That doesn't sound good. I'll use my last campaign's primed dice. Um, constitution saving throw. Okay. Yes, please. Ooh, they betrayed you. Uh, I got, I won't tell you the modifier, I got an 11. That's probably not good. First roll of the campaign. And it's above 10. It's above High 10. High rollers. <laughs> Average roller. Average roller. Above Mid rollers. Mid rollers, Mid -rollers. <laughs> yeah. We've got to change the name of everything. Hi, Mark. As that darkness reaches into your throat and that pain in your chest and your body begins to swell, suddenly you wake up. What does Anthea is? It, what does Anthea do? He is. He almost jumps out of bed. Like he can still feel these remnants of this dream, this reality, as far as he's concerned right now. Um, like whatever he still sees in his mind, he's almost trying to bat away from him still. Mm -hmm. And it will probably take him a couple of seconds to realize where he is, mm -hmm. to to sort of land back <laughs> on out there. Um, and he will be gasping and shaky breath and uh, really like trying to regain just, well, his, his breath again, like yeah. clutching his chest. Yeah. When you um, clutch at your chest, you feel that that pain from the dream is still lingering, it's still there. And you feel your body as you know it to be. You feel grounded in reality, the smell of the inn, the wood, the straw mattress, the sheets, bringing you back to, it was a dream, it was a dream, it was a dream. It was a nightmare, but it was a dream. Yeah. You're here, you're safe. 
And as that settles in, you do hear a voice outside the door like, Is everything all right in there? Uh, yes, yes, everything is okay. Just <laughs> just waking up. A little bit of a bad dream, I'm afraid. Well, uh, nothing cures a bad dream like some breakfast. We, I was bringing you some. It, can I come in? Um, I will look around for a second. Is there like a, a, a mirror or something? Uh, not in this kind of in. This is quite a kind of comfortable country and they probably wouldn't have like a mirror in here. That would be quite an, a, a lavish thing. Sure. You could maybe go up to like you know, the window or something like that, and you're trying to glance at your reflection, but it, it's hazy because the light's already coming in, like, you can't quite get a good reflection. I mean, I'll, like, try and sort of stroke my hair back and comb it back with my hand, and um, I'd probably feel the matted, sweaty sort of... Yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely, like, dr you'd be drenched in sweat, mm. but you do feel recovered. You feel your energies come back, like that long sleep, the food that you had last night has done wonders to recover your stamina um, and things like that. But yeah, dripping in sweat and just heart going ba-dum, 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 and still beating fast. Um, I would, I, I probably think I look fine. Like I just said, I've had a bad dream, it's fine. Um, I will go over to the door, put my hand, my clawed hand on the uh, door handle, mm -hmm. sort of, Still, a sh catch myself with a still a shaky breath, breathe in deeply, and then conjure a smile as I turn the door handle and greet this person. Yeah, and the person stood uh, in the doorway is uh, Adriana uh, Piani, the uh, innkeeper that you met last night, um, that uh, you know fed you and gave you the room, and um, that you arrived with uh, the the wild heart, the lion wild heart, who helped you arrive here, that like found you on the road, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and she looks at you and she's carrying like a plate and she has like a very simple kind of like porridge uh, with a little bit of honey and syrup, um, maybe like a glass of like a kind of almost like frothy looking milk or something like that. Um, and she's like, I just brought you something simple. Is that all right? That's more than enough. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. It's, you're just, uh, I had a bit of a commotion in there. Is everything okay? Oh, no, totally fine. Long, long journey traveling from the city. It was just a very restful, rest, deep, deep sleep. Yes, you were, you were very tired when you and your friend arrived, I could yes, see that. I but, uh, almost passed out at the table with mm. the rest. <laughs> I'm glad that you're free. You see this woman, Adriana, she is um, she is another wild heart, but she has more like a deer uh, kind of quality to her. She has like the little freckles, kind of like the speckling, almost like a deer motif, that brown sort of um, brown and, and creamy kind of like coloring to her like face and skin. There is like a little pair of like antlers, like little kind of stubby uh, deer kind of horns and antlers. Um, and uh, you can see like a little bushy tail. She's more human humanoid though, like uh, unlike the lion man that you encountered last night, some wild hearts, very much like Dragonborn, like yourself, some appear more humanoid, some appear more animalistic, in the same way that Dragonborn can either appear draconic or they can appear more humanoid. Mm. Um, she has that more humanoid look, and she's like, well, when you finish this, um, your friend who came with you, they, they went out into the village. I think they're probably out in the market by now or, or nearby. Um, but uh, it's market day. There's many people here. You oh, can, wonderful. Uh, if you need supplies and things like that, I think that you should uh, maybe head in there. But uh, no rush, no pressure. I would be more than happy to meet up with uh, Grafath again <laughs> and uh, start a new day. Yes, well. Enjoy your breakfast. Thank you very much. Of course, of course. We'll be downstairs if you need anything. Um, and as we do, uh, you know, you probably sit down, imagine you kind of have something to eat. Again, still quite hungry. Like, it's it's been a while since you've managed to have this much food and you yeah, don't know if you're going to get more. When the door closes, some of that visage drops a little bit and just slowly tries to stomach this meal mm. uh, before deciding to, yeah, uh, to leave. And I would try to seek out Gruff. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we follow, we, we stay with Xanthius, and we follow Xanthius as you make your way into town. And this is about the point where, because you'd gotten up so early, Gruff, um, and the Reverend uh, kind of brought you up here, it was, you know, you were sat out there for a long time. This is the point where all of you are now within this market space. Um, and you begin to kind of catch each other. You catch glimpses of each other. Uh, Daisy, you see the, the large yacht near that was playing the, the beautiful music last night um, in the town and, and seemed very friendly. You actually catch sight of the, the big uh, lion man uh, that you encountered. And 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 you think you recognize the, the dragonborn that was in the inn as well. People that you briefly just, you know, in passing saw and you begin to see each other as 
the market of Bernal comes to life. Um, there are people selling local goods, uh, traders, food, produce, all of this kind of stuff in this lovely little haphazard, scattered, labyrinthian market in the middle of this big village. And you can see the larger, taller buildings, the Lordly Reigns Inn, the Peony Post, kind of like these central buildings like really seem to draw like the town around them as if the town almost sprung up around them almost um you can see the walled the wooden walls on the outer skirts there are a few cottages maybe a few more sort of brick and mortar stores that have kind of like been built around it as well with all with like thatched roofs or tiled roofs painted in bright colors and everywhere you look hanging from the buildings or attached on flags to the wooden walls you see uh the colors the heraldry of this region um, now, for most of you, you most of you would be familiar that a region of a province, each uh, the empire divided into these provinces, but each province has these different regions where the different dragon hosts and families kind of rule, um, and they all have these different colors and symbols. Um, and this one is a, a gray and orange, and it seems to have the symbol of a mountain peak that is on fire, like a kind of like fiery symbol around a mountain peak, um, and split into gray and orange, uh, divided in halves, basically. Um, and you see those kind of fluttering everywhere. Everywhere. And it's very common for a, a region to display their, their local nobles, their duke or duchess's heraldry and colors. Um, uh, not that any of you, except for maybe Daisy, would know exactly who that is for this region. Um, would that be something Daisy would know and care about? I think she would know about it. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't necessarily be like, she's not, she doesn't super care. She cares about like it enough to be like, I respect the person mm. in charge, mm -hmm. but I'm not like overly. I don't need to look yeah. up their life story, their history, and things. You, you would know? so you would know the name of the current yeah, kind of life. Yeah. So in that case, you know that uh, Burnell sits in North Vale, which is the region, and that North Vale is uh, basically the the Duke is Duke Ignarius, um, a red dragon, a red dragon who is the Duke here, um, and his family, his host. Um, and yeah, you begin to kind of see each other from a car across the marketplace. And you will have your places. Graf, you're still with the Reverend. He's probably kind of like going around. He's meeting locals. He's doing what the, you know, the local priest would do. He's coming up. Oh, how are you, my dear? Are you well? Do you need anything? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But scions and saints bless you. And he's kind of going around. This is my new friend, Graf. Uh, he's lovely, isn't he? Very tall, very strong. I um, mean, he's kind of introducing you as you kind of go around. And I think uh, as, as that's happening, like mm. Graf is very, like, he doesn't say a lot. Like, he, mm. he's polite and he's enjoying it and he's receptive, but he's just a very much, like, firm nod, firm handshake, mm. very few words mm. you know, as he's being, you know, paraded around and getting to know everyone. I think as well, like, he would be trying to disentangle him. So the closer they get to the, the peony post, which mm -hmm. is the inn we've been staying at, the closer we get to it, the more he's trying to untangle himself from the Reverend because he's he's got Xanthius mm. in his mind and he's like trying to go back and mm. like check on Xanthius. How obvious is Gruff being in this attempt? Not very. He's very awkward about it. Like right. he's trying to be very polite, especially because you have reverence for the Reverend. Mm -hmm. um, so he's trying to be like, I, you know, I don't want to be a bother. You know, I don't want to take up all your time. No, you're not being a bother at all, Graf. Oh, look, it's Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Hello, Reverend. Who's this tall, handsome fellow? And it's just like, oh, this is my new friend, Graf. Um, can you give me a... It's going to sound weird, Ooh. but can you make an intimidation check? Not because you're trying to be scary, but this is intimidation. I like the idea that it's also, like, being confident and, like, kind of taking a, a strong... And, you know, imposing, like, something that you want to say to somebody mm. in a more sort of forceful manner. Or or you can make a persuasion check if you want to be, if you think that you're being a bit more sort of like, oh no, I don't want to be a bother, you know, you're almost trying to like being pleading. So it's up to you which way you want to do. Hey. I think knowing Graf, it would be more intimidation, not in an aggressive way, but just in a very No, like, please, I need to be going. And, and yeah. trying to be like. Yeah. That is a 16. 16. I'm going to roll an insight check to see if the Reverend picks up on the fact that you kind of want to have other things that you want to do. Um, okay. So, like, as you do, and he introduces this last lady, uh, Sarah. She appears to be a, um, let's see here. She would probably be a, 
another halfling, we'll say. She's like a little halfling old sort of granny and sort of like, you know, she's got a little carrot, you know, vegetable stand that she's selling to locals from. Um, and as you're kind of talking and, and as you introduce, but you kind of make that like, no, Reverend, please. I have, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I get carried away, chattering away. No, no, you go about your business, my good man. It's lovely to meet you. Scions on Saint, bless your day. Very wonderful, wonderful. And if you ever need anything, please come down to the church. We are always open for prayer, advice, whatever you need, my good man, whatever you need. Thank, th thank you, Reverend. Uh, thank you for your warm welcome, but I have a ward I need to go and check on. Oh, yes, I don't want to keep you from such important duties. No, 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 indeed. Well, saints and saints, saints and science be with you. Saints and science be with you. Yes, very good. Um, and yeah, you begin making your way, and as you do, you do see Xanthius probably at that point coming out, but we're going to... Oh, no, so good. No, 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 I don't want to, I just want to kind of make sure everyone gets I want to get everyone else then. Not everyone else, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, Ophelia, you are out with Raoul. Uh, and he's taking you around. He's um, kind of pointing out various places. Uh, he points out the other inns. He points out some of the, the local traders. Um, but he'll he'll turn around to you as you're walking and say, "So, uh, Sister Ophelia, if I can, what what exactly? Why did you come here to this village? Why are you here in Caldra?" It's my great calling. I've been uh, summoned here by those in higher stead than myself to complete a task on their behalf. Oh. Oh, that almost sounds like a, a knightly duty. Uh, what we would have here, our our our, uh, our superiors, I suppose, our nobles, the dragons. Uh, sometimes people request tests to become uh, knights or, or reeves or marshals and things like that, uh, authorities um, to go and do service. Is, is it, it sounds quite similar to that. It's, it's quite an important duty. You could say so. Mine would be more diplomatic, I suppose. Ah, I see. Mm. I see. Uh -huh. Are you a pious man? I, I, as any good citizen of, of the Empire, yes, I, I pray to the Scions and the Saints when I need to, and, uh, you know, they, they are our saviors, they protected us, and, and they have empowered uh, many of our leaders and given us guidance and, and things like that, but uh, I, I must admit, I'm, I'm, I don't always go down to the church for, for prayers on the new moons, and, you know, I, I offer it in my small way, but it's, it's not a big part of my life, at least not... Uh, not for now. I've, um, and he kind of gets this little bit of a faraway look in his eyes. Do you want to roll me an insight check on oh, it? Yeah. Oh. oh, dear, it's not very good. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Can I just say it was really weird that I rolled Eleven. actually quite well on that? <laughs> yeah. Long um, continue, but it won't. No. <laughs> With an 11, yeah, you see, he gets this faraway look in his eyes. He's just like, I don't. Sometimes I do wonder how much the, the scions and the saints look down upon us. And there's like this kind of hint, but it's hard to like glance exactly what that might mean. No, it could be another path if you wish to take it. It does sort of like narrow his eyes. Oh, I've heard of a few things. I know that there are there are those that believe in, in spirits and the land having powers and I've, and he kind of like leans in, not conspiratorially, but almost like he doesn't want to be overheard. And I've heard that there are some who claim to receive divine gifts from the Dragon Empress now that she's gone, and he does make like a, an imperial gesture, like he puts his hand over his heart and nods his head. Um, but uh, I know that the the church and the faith, the, the, the priests of the Scions don't uh, don't like us talking about that too much, but uh, it, it, do you have a faith? Are, are you a faithful person, a, a person of belief? Oh yes, I pray to the Grave Father. <laughs> Grave Father? Mm. <laughs> Some deity in your lands. I've, I've never heard of this entity or this figure. Oh, he blessed the mortals with magic long, long, long ago. And those that believe in his teachings, they are welcomed into his immortal kingdom um, <laughs> with gifts, gifts of power, wealth, happiness. You, you, please forgive me. This is, uh, you, you are taken somewhere else when you, when you die, when you pass? Well, we can be. Some, some are, t some are re reborn, uh, shall we say? Well, when you say that, he's like, oh, it, well, that is, the, I mean, that is, that is our belief that when we, we pass, we are reborn. If we are not worthy, we are reborn to, to live a new life. But you, in your case, people who are mainly reborn have, have... physical re manifestation of the physical form. Your, your lands are strange. Uh, I'm fascinated, but mm. uh, this is, this is quite a lot. I mean, how very interesting. And he sort of like leans in, but he does 
it gets starts getting nervous. Even with like, you don't need to roll an insight to check that like this is a topic that like he's willing to learn more about. But like he's glancing around, he's like looking like who's listening. Where and he looks and he sees where the reverend is, and he's like, oh, and he kind of diverts you maybe in a slightly different path, taking you away from the reverend almost. Um, but he does sort of he seems to be interested in a way, but is is curious. Well, what does this uh, from the nature of the name Grave Father? This sounds like there is some element of of death and you say that uh, as you pass like but what about um soldiers and war how is that uh... well soldier well war and soldiers they are mere tools i suppose in our faith and those tools are created by those who have passed before us so that those that come afterwards can live a more peaceful and prosperous life frowns especially when you said like soldiers are tools it's definitely almost not angry but like he kind of frowns his head but then as you keep going he's like what what do you mean so, what who uh, do you not have sort of like soldiers in your life you said they are tools do you create them with magic or some such well they are <laughs> repurposed shall we say oh no. so oh, oh no 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 as i was as i was saying previously so Personal. we live a peaceful and personal prosperous life so the ones that come after us may live the same it just it's living a life of toil does not come to the mortal being you do people not work you do, do they do not work oh people that breathe and live do not work that's not our fate <laughs> Very intrigued. Uh, as you continue having this conversation with Raoul, as you make your way around the marketplace, is there anywhere you want to go to as you're having this conversation? Is there anything that takes your interest, or are you looking for anything in particular? I think Ophelia would just be glancing around at the market stall, looking at mm. all the, just getting a, getting a feel for like all the vibrancy, the life, mm. getting a feel for like the type of people that live in this village. Yeah, and I think when you, as you're doing that, you definitely notice here, especially as you have this conversation about toil and life and strife and things like that, everywhere you look there, you see, you begin to see people, not in the marketplace, but they're like saying goodbye and heading off somewhere. Um, and you see that they carry picks. Living people carrying picks is a very strange sight for you. Hmm. Dressed in like ragged clothing. <laughs> um, There's that word again. <laughs> you see people selling fruits and vegetables and crops and and uh, you know things of of you know the land. Um, but they look tired and weary and dirty. And again, that's not something you're very used to at all. But then something that you are used to catches your eye, and you see that there is this kind of very beautiful tent in rich purples and golds and silvers, um, and it's kind of got this lovely little frame to it, and a little beautiful table set out in front of it, and there is this elven woman. Uh, kind of rare uh, to see, but not so rare as to, that you would not know that they are an elf. Um, they look quite young for an elf, and they're smiling, and they have this beautiful array of clothing. Like, it looks like the handmade clothing, but it is beautifully done from these lovely rich fabrics and things. Um, and uh, she's sort of looking around and occasionally people come up and they buy like a cloak or a hat or things like that. But you can see just behind inside the tent racks of dresses and tail and tunics and tabards and, and things like that. And she definitely seems to be not as busy as everybody else, but it definitely that beautiful. And you can see almost like little, not gemstones, but maybe like little sparkling stones and things like that. Nothing, nothing truly valuable. Valuable, but like little elements of that woven in and things like that. His eyes widen and she sort of glides across to have a quick look. <laughs> sure. Glides. Yeah. Your <laughs> word choice today. Just <laughs> <laughs> so we're clear, you're not literally. No, gliding. no. Wouldn't she, she she's heavily armored, but she walks surprisingly lightly. Yeah, like, like every step is pre-planned immaculately. So graceful. Like a cat yeah. Yeah. retracing its poor prints. Yeah. <laughs> behind behind Uf Ophelia uh, and trailing behind Raoul as well is Percival, who does almost look like they're gliding because their robes just fall <laughs> straight to the ground. They're picking up dirt and things like that. But they just, they're like a, a shadow, like a, a shadow has come to life and it's just like what? moving around. You just figured um, something out? You just saw yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, you got there. Uh, as you begin making your way, <laughs> Ophelia, you, you move over to the beautiful uh, clothing stand. Um, oh, yeah, I just clipped his head. 
Uh, we'll come back to everybody in a minute. Uh, mm-hmm. Rowan. What the fuck? <laughs> no, 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 yeah, uh, listen. I just stabbed my hand on two D4s. <laughs> oh, Caltrops. Rowan, uh, how, I mean, it's up to you, like, you could still be talking to the lovely uh, older dwarven woman. You would have learned that her name, this older dwarven uh, stonesmith, um, is uh, uh, Gabrilla, uh, Gabrilla Tintos. Um, good name. Nice. That's, mm-hmm. really, that's a really good name. Tintos. Yeah. Gabrilla Tintos. <laughs> Gabrilla Tintos. Um, you could still be talking to Gabrilla if you'd like to, but also you could have gone up and wandered around. She probably. It depends on how conversational she is, mm. but I am pressing for every detail of every rock. Like a lot of old people, she is very happy to have somebody to talk to Aww. and is just waffling away to you. She, she tells you, like, yes, yes, I used to build a little hinge. And she, uh, would, would Rowan be curious about the strange, like, metal fingers and, like, the metal leg that she seems to have, these metal, like, growths would, and things? Uh, respectfully mm. ask. Hmm. Uh, about these sort of things. Forgive me, your accessories. Oh, yes, my, yes, my, um, my condition. It is a thing that affects all dwarves. Condition, I'm so sorry. Yes, no, I, I, normally if you, I'm sure in your travels you've encountered many dwarves, um, and there you may see piercings and, and decorations I and thought things. I they were accessories. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. they are, they are grown from us, and, and in Rome. the young, yes. In the young, we shape them to be beautiful accessories. I, I once, um, uh, and she gestures uh, my feet. Uh, they would, I would decorate them to almost be like beautiful spirals and ringlets and anklets, uh, all growing out of my legs. Wonderful. And, and uh, I was, uh, you know, in, a, in a time of youth, I would hike up my skirts and dance a little jig and show them off, and they would glitter in the I sun. I can picture that. It was very sweet. Uh, and uh, but as we grow older. Uh, they begin to appear in other places, and and then as we reach our final years, as as I have come to be, we our bodies become taken over by the 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 substance that is within us. In in my case, she tin, as my name suggests. Um, uh, Rowan's tin. welling up. But uh, and eventually, my my body will become the whole uh, matter, and I will pass. You become. The rock. A metal rock. In some dwarves, for those that we believe have a great destiny, they can be uh, almost made of rubies or uh, diamonds or uh, gold or uh, adamantine, mithril. Our greatest heroes, our greatest knights, uh, uh, they have had great destinies and they, they will eventually become matters of this material. What glorious purpose. Yes, yes, indeed. I see I... no final way to end. Oh, that is so sweet, is it? I want to be. Can I do that? <laughs> oh, uh, well, I, I've never heard of a non-dwarf um, with the condition. With uh, Some call it a curse, uh, others a gift. Oh, no. It depends, I gift. suppose. Yes, it, it, it can be. I am just common tin, nothing special. Tin. Is important. Oh, that's very sweet of you to say. I, I, I know it is. You are a very kind man. I no, don't no. know what tin is. <laughs> oh, there it, it is. It is a metal, a, a common metal, right? Found in many places, um, and, and so it I. It looks wonderful. Oh, thank you. It is. I've always found it very pretty. It catches the light very nice. Um, but yes, so uh, one day, uh, not too long now, I think. Uh, Perhaps a few more years or months, I don't know, but my condition spreads rapidly. And you will live forever. Oh. Well, um, yes, I will be reborn as the scions and saints have told us, and my body will be used to help my family. They will, uh, perhaps I will be sold to be crafted into things, or I, if I, if they have enough, they will uh, make a statue of me to remember me. As she, as she says statue, mm. uh, Rowan's eyes look concerned, mm-hmm. and then he starts looking at the statue that he bought for a silver, mm-hmm. and he starts pointing at it. This, was this a person? No, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that no. would be 
Oh, this this rock is much like the the stone that makes the the, the foundations here. It is from um, the mine, Black Rock Mine, just uh, up in the mountains. Okay, good. Uh, well, you have been very sweet to talk to me for so long, but you you the have adventures. Yeah. You can hear the school. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, you've ta- I've taken up too much. Yeah, the youth should not be wasted sitting with the old. Go, go, I explore. Could sit here for days. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could, but you shouldn't. Uh, go, go. I have things to sell. Uh, send uh, customers to speak with. Yes, I am in the way of customers. <laughs> My apologies. Go, go enjoy yourself. And, Please. And she like it's been. Oh, oh, cool. You're very big. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and, she and yeah, and you just, you get that, you know, you hug someone and they're very frail and they're very delicate and you can just Wait, tell. feel the tin at all? Uh, yeah, you would, yeah. Like, because there's parts of it, like, growing out of, like, her shoulders and her necks. Like, you can see what probably when she was younger would have been worked into something she's just let grow and, like, it's kind of jagged. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, you can see, like, her hand is it's beginning to spread all down her arm and, like, there's patches of her neck. Um, and it probably internally, if what she said and that they do eventually all become an entire thing, like, it's probably their internal organs. Like, she's... Based on what she said, you don't think she's probably got long. I like Tim. It's just sort of like, and I like you. <laughs> that is your face. Um, what would... Uh, She's precious. Would Rowan fancy going anywhere or, like, you know, as he kind of stands up or, like... Uh, you do catch sight of people, so you see Daisy, you see some of the other people on around, you see pretty much everybody that you saw in the inn last night. If he then. catches sight of anyone, mm-hmm. he's doing a big wave. Sure. Very happy. Sure. Uh, and he's po- showing the rock <laughs> statue that he's got, pointing <laughs> at it. Look. <laughs> Can I go over? Absolutely. <laughs> I would probably go over with my book, having just had my thoughts about lyrics and things, and go over and go, oh, oh, is that the pebble? The pebble? No, the one you sang about. This is Gabriella's uh, statue. Oh, uh, do you have the pebble? What pebble? The pebbles you sang about last night. No, the pebbles wished to remain. Oh. I carry their story with me, but they do not come with me. Sometimes they wish to come with me, like this, but the pebbles wish to stay in Azar. Did you talk to the pebble? The pebbles speak to me. What do they sound like? They sound like this when I get my loot out. (laughs) And I pluck uh, the lowest note on the strings, and it starts to resonate with a certain tone that takes a life of its own and just sounds very peaceful, like an ambient tone. Daisy is going to grab him by the arm and pull him off to the oh. side okay. and sit down cross-legged and pull him to sit down mm. and, and just sit down and look at him and go, so I think we could write some lyrics to your music about the pebble, but I need to know more about the pebble and how the pebble feels to be able to write the lyrics the for the pebble. The pebble was very sad. Oh. Yes. Why was it sad? other pebble friends were around it <laughs> for many centuries. As we know, pebbles like to lay by lakes. They're often placed there by the lake itself. But his pebble friend got washed away. <laughs> And he's been alone for many decades. You can see why you wrote a song about it. I'm the first person that's listened to his story. Well, then we should make some lyrics. We should tell the pebble's story. Yes. Does, does the pebble have a name? I didn't ask its name. <laughs> I must go back. We can we can make one up for now. Seems like it's quite hard. Then far. we seek approval. We'll ask the pebble next time we see it. I don't want to pick a name that would be unsuitable. Of course. Did you get a vibe for it? Oh, yes. Workshop something? Yes. Uh, Quite a cheeky little pebble, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Once you get to know him. Okay, I'm going to write this down. Pebble. Nice pictures you have in your book. Oh, thank you. I found a really nice orange tree. Do you want an orange? Yes. I give him an orange because I've collected a few by this point. Yeah. I, I grip it in my massive hand. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go and buy some bread, and then I'm going to, to have a think about the pebble. Bread. Yes, I'm hungry. Okay. Maybe we should eat. 
Probably. We should find the others, our other best friends. The shiny, scary yes. boy. The shiny one, the big, fluffy one, the strange one. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I think yeah. she's lovely. She scares me, though. As you have talked about blood. As you talk about these other friends, uh, we do see, yeah, Gruff and Zan. This is, we see you guys kind of like catching up once again. As I, I thought I'd do this just as Kim took a drink as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right. When you, when we spoke, this is Tom talking to Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, did you introduce yourself as Gruffith or as Gruff to me? I would have said Gruffith, but you can call me Gruff. Wait, you would have said, yeah, Gruffith, but you can call me Gruff, okay. I would have said my iconic phrase, hello, my name is Gruff. <laughs> In order to get the accent. <laughs> hello, my name is Gruffith, but you can call me Gruff. Uh, Little Lordling, good morrow to Xanthius you. Xanthius is, as I mentioned, Xanthius is fine. I'm, I'm worried about you. Did you sleep well? Oh, I slept, um, very well. <laughs> there was a pause there. That was a, uh, well, I, for a second there, I thought I could reminisce a dream there, but no, gone. You know how it is <laughs> when you wake up and um, vanishes. Uh, I mean, you can, yeah, give me a deception check, I guess, Xanthius, and an insight <laughs> check from Gruff. Oh yeah, baby, deception. Xanthius is very, yeah, very good at speaking. 21. 21. <laughs> Uh, so status quo. So you definitely Gruff has a suspicion that the truth isn't there, but y it could just be that something's playing on you, and like you know, maybe you're yeah, just imagining true. it. Yeah. We're just we're just stood there staring at each other. You're just basically not oh, sure. Really, really good dream. It's gone. Mm. <laughs> it's very yes. convincing, Tom. Where to go? <laughs> hmm. You know how dreams be. <laughs> they do be that way. Just narrowing of the eyes. Yeah. Um, but enough about me. How, how did you sleep? I, uh, lightly as always, and then I've been up since, uh, since the dawn broke. Dawn? Yes. Okay. Well, normally I'm out fishing at this time. Fishing? Yes. Really? Mm. Well, I mean... When the stars are still overhead. It's far too early for me. I figured you were a bit of a city boy, maybe? No, 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 no. no. Definitely not scholar? a city boy. Scholar? Not a scholar. No? No. Some kind of light work where you don't have to be up. At the crack of dawn. Well, just not stars in the sky early. But then how would you know where to go? Because they guide you. The roads tend to guide me more than anything else. But anyway, um... I brought you some food. You Did you pay for that? Uh, technically, the Reverend paid for it. <laughs> do I need to pay the Reverend back? I, I suppose I do. I'm trying <laughs> to think about the logistics of this. Now... Am I still under your care? Not that I don't appreciate it. Uh, please, I, I very much appreciate it. It's just, uh, as I stand now, I don't feel... What was it you said? Um, the... Are you still meek, infirm, or vulnerable? I don't feel meek. I'm not infirm. Let me feel your forehead. Okay. Anything? <laughs> warm. warm. Yeah, warm, but... Clammy. But also, looking at the scales... You know that gold dragons tend to have like an element of like heat and flame and things like that. Like that could just be a dragon, a dragonborn thing. Like the heat. Like he's I've... warmer than you would expect. But I'll be honest, I've never taken the temperature of a dragonborn. Is this normal? This is no, that's normal. That's normal. Clammy? I do have Clammy? something to admit. I was so tired last night that I did sleep in my clothes. Ah. Uh. So a change of clothes would be wonderful. But uh, again, this I can't be bothering you with this. This is I I. I very much appreciate the help. I do. Uh, and I've given you... I mean, do you want more gold? It, it, what, I, I don't understand this arrangement. I found you by the side of the road. Yes. When you were infirm. Yes. And vulnerable. So it is yes. my duty to protect you and right this. And what happens when we reach the end of our obligation, our contract? Is it a contract? I suppose it's a verbal contract or a moral contract. You did say you'd be a character reference for me, and that's good for a dragonborn. Did I? Yes. I'm going to be honest. You were quite night. delirious last night. I, it, was, it was a haze. Very, so tired. Um, but if you want me to say nice things about you... That would be good. You're a nice person. Not to me. Oh. To, to uh, well... Anyone who asks. Right. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, speaking of anyone who asks, well, there were others, weren't there? Yes, there was a tall one, a short one, and a pointy one. As you, <laughs> as you describe them in such eloquent means, <laughs> she's very pointy. Yeah, it you do really well. see. Uh, you clearly can see the others. Like looking around, you're kind of at the entrance to the peony post, kind of having just met Xanthius as he comes outside. You can see the others. You see Rowan and Daisy almost looking in your direction, like pointing towards you, as you guys have spotted them as well. And Ophelia, whilst you've been travelling with Rao, he's uh, turned and he's doing some business. You've been sort of examining these beautiful dresses, but you do kind of catch this conversation. Uh, maybe uh, even Percival would probably tug you on the sleeve and with a kind of drooping thing, point in a direction towards the companions that you witnessed at the gate last night. But as as you do this, a voice calls out. <laughs> Marshal! Marshal! Sol soldiers are coming up the road! Uh, quick! Um, and you hear a commotion. As you hear some kind of like, uh, you hear the, the rustling sounds, you begin to hear kind of like armored boots, um, and you hear a loud kind of beep, 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 beep. In the name of the Duke, open the gates. Uh, and uh, the guards on the gate sort of panic. Um, they look down at their companion who's come running in, this uh, this uh, human man, a dwarf up on the thing. He like looks down, like shrugs his shoulders. The man like shrugs back and he's like, Marshal, Marshal, quick, I don't know what to do. Um, and the dwarf, and you hear another voice like, open the gates now, please. Uh, on the on, on behalf of the Duke, uh, and the dwarf like panics and just opens the gates. Um, and you see entering into Burnell and into basically the opening front of the market square, you see uh, not that a large number enter into the village, but you glance outside the gates and you can see maybe 20 or so soldiers, um, all dressed as like man at arms and women at arms, basically, uh, gray and orange tabards with kind of leather, uh, you know, simple scale mail and chain mail and so stuff like that. The figure that enters, uh, there's a number of them. Um, two which catch your eye specifically with a handful of better equipped looking soldiers, men and women um, in slightly better armor, like kind of more polished chain mail, maybe little bits of plate mail here and there. Some of them look quite lightly armored though as well, like they have like leathers and bows, almost looking more like woodsmen or like trackers and things like that. The two that draw your eye, however, the first is a uh, a very well-dressed human man in plate armor, uh, or breastplate, sorry, so not full plate armor, but like breastplate with leather and little bits of chain here and there, tall leather boots, um, uh, with a, a resplendent orange cape. Uh, he has a helmet that he's taken off and is carrying one hand, long dark hair, probably down to like his, his shoulders, um, very handsome features. Um, and he's kind of stood there and he seems to be the one calling out. Uh, next to him is a much more sinister looking figure. They are quite tall, uh, very lithe, but Athletic, kind of almost like a gymnast or a dancer's kind of build. Um, and they appear to be an orc. Uh, you can see that they have this almost glowing scar that runs down their neck and down into their leather, black leather jerkin. Um, you can see that they have like a black coat, black leather jerkin, black trousers, black boots, um, dressed all in black with a hood. Um, and they seem to have a, uh, a badge of, of some sort of office on their, on their lapel. You can see like blades and, and weapons and things like that all arrayed them. Um, as they do, as these people come in, the whole village is just turned and is in stunned silence of what is happening. As these men kind of come in, you see the captain like whisper something, he gestures, a couple more of the soldiers come in. Um, he looks up at the gate, uh, the guard on the gate, and he looks to the other guard. Uh, Bring me the marshal and the reeve of the village, please. Uh, uh, and they sort of like look around and then very quickly coming from several of the buildings, you see a number of other uh, figures approaching. Uh, you see a dwarven woman, shaved heads on the side and then the rest of it braided into this thick black braid that spills down her hair, it's heavily scarred, looks very rough and dangerous, wearing armor that's been like cobbled together and she's still just putting it, finishing putting it on, like one hand's coming out of a sleeve. You can see like a big hand axe in her belt loop and she's got a short sword in the other hand. I um, mean, she looks furious. She's just like stomping over. Um, and beside her is this rather meek looking, maybe in her middle ages, she looks 
like a librarian or an accountant. She has like round spectacles, little neat bodice, uh, dark crimson red bodice with little gold buttons, big pencil kind of hoop skirt, um, gray hair, and she's kind of like hurrying uh, alongside them, carrying a book basically. Um, and as they approach, uh, you hear the captain kind of uh, address them uh, and turn around uh, and will say, uh, ah, are you the mayor, are you the reeve uh, of the town uh, looking, uh, it's one of you the reeve, and the, the spectacled looking woman is like, oh, that would be me, uh, c- captain? Uh, and, and he looks, yes, and he kind of nods, and he has like a whispered conversation with these two. Um, as you guys are looking around, what, what's everyone's reaction to all of this? What's the state of the rest of the village? Uh... Like, are they all sort of... They're just in stuns, like, shocked, like, what is going... But there's almost, like, a gossipy nature. Like, they're not afraid, but they're just like, what's going on? Like, everyone's, like, leaning out windows. People have, like, like hustled around. Um, you see that the villagers are all just watching in stun silence. The soldiers that came in with these figures have very rapidly moved to the other gate, and they have stood in front of that gate, um, almost as if blocking anyone from leaving. Oh. Are, are we all grouped up at this point? Are you can all see each other, yeah. You're all kind of like... see each other, yeah. but we're not grouped. Yeah, You could be. You could easily, yeah. like, like, kind of yeah, like, oh, what's, you, you know how, like, when crowds happen because an event yeah. is taking place and you kind of merge together? You can absolutely do that. Daisy's got a mouthful of way too much bread right now, and she's just holding the rest of it, and she just sidesteps behind Rowan. <laughs> I think, yeah, like, Gruff as well would have subconsciously kind of stepped in front of Daisy and Xanthius. Like, mm-hmm. just, yeah. Sure. Say yeah. hello. Oh, uh... What's happening? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we should sit in the tavern for a bit while this all blows over. I want to hear what. Okay. Uh, yeah, you kind of wait for a moment. Um, what's Ophelia doing actually as well? Yeah, Ophelia will um, take Percival and she'll see the group and just sidle up to them, mm-hmm. almost kind of like silently, like they don't know if she's there. She'll just be like, oh, bleed me. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, oh, morning. Hello. Hello. Can uh, you see what's happening over there? Finally, some action. Bleed me dry. Action? What? Uh, I don't want action. Daisy's going to be waving her hand in front of Percival. Yeah, because we. Can you make a perception check for me, no. Daisy? You're the first person to actually like get close and. and well, we uh, would never met Percival, Percival because um, when no. we were in the inn, yeah. you came. Daisy through. did because Daisy uh, met. Uh, I yeah, did. briefly. I didn't. It was in the dark though, so yeah. I didn't like. But you see, Look the rest that, of you yeah. see behind, next to Ophelia, this black friar's robe, uh, how, cowl completely covering the face, mm-hmm. hands, go, like, it's just a black shape. It's like a cloak has just animated and is following this woman by, and it's big and drapey. Um, 14. Because 14. Daisy, she knew that he wasn't talking at the gate. Like, they couldn't get him to take his hood off. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get him to talk, so she's like... Yeah, you're a little curious thing. <laughs> and you go right up to and you're like peering into his cowl, right? Would, how how would Percival react? I think Percival would probably step back. Or would back. his training be? He would he would probably he would try step, and, step right, back. I'll make a yeah. stealth check for Percival. In fact, you can make a stealth check for Percival. Oh, nice. I don't think it's your bonus, so just use his dex. Okay. I'll be in extras. This is Percival's little ditty. <laughs> Sixteen. So, so Daisy, you try and get a good look at this fella, um, but he kind of very, very gracefully, expertly pulls back and like twists it so you can't see under the hood and just avoids you getting too close. However, oh, a note, a secret note. Do you tell your friend about this figure? Like they can sense them, but you know that your friend's senses aren't as good. Like you kind of have to relay information to them. Potentially, I feel like between... So this morning when I was sitting doodling, I feel like she would have probably explained everyone she met last night Mm -hmm. to them anyway, just as a morning catch-up kind of thing, you know? Okay. Good to know. Okay. You don't get a good look at Percival. Um, And uh, there is a kind of like... uh, uh, there is a curiosity within you. You know your friend's quite curious as well. But yeah, Percival kind of steps back, moves next to your fellow, just kind of turns the head. too close to him, darling. I, I just wouldn't advise it. You might not like it. That's terrifying. Why? <laughs> as this conversation happens, as you ask why, I'll be like, shh, shh. Yeah. They're speaking. Well, you see the uh, the well dressed captain. You heard that the you know that that might be what they're called. Um, is finished talking. You hear the dwarven woman, uh, kind of like 
you would overhear the last bit of their conversation would be, um, uh, I can't but at least my people haven't failed in their job, Captain. We, nothing has happened. Like, you're the ones who have failed in this. Of course, I'm bound by the Duke to assist you, and I will render that aid, but I can assure you they didn't come here. Uh, and the captain just almost silences her with a hand. And then he looks round. Um, and you can see that the other soldiers, there was quite a few of them outside, a few more of them have filtered into the village. And they've basically been like asking people to come out into the market square. They're like going up to doors and being like, could you please come out into the market square for us, please come in here. And you can see that the village of Burnell, as many people as they can are being gathered here. Nobody's being dragged out of their homes. Nobody's being forced to come, but they're encouraging people to come and listen, saying that there is uh, important information that needs to be shared. Um, the I'm now Zathias. concerned. Yeah? <laughs> is there anything I recognize here? What are you looking if for? I, I'm looking for... I'm looking for any dragonborn, which okay. I believe... I, I think you described that there wasn't any, but I'll have a quick look around to see if there are any. Mm -hmm. And is there anything I recognize from my time in the city? Okay. Can you make a perception check, please, Tom? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Your perception, where's it going? It's under 30. New character. It's minus one. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ooh. Two. <laughs> <laughs> is that your worst ever perception? Right? I think it, it might be. Did you feel a little bit sick? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go to break. <laughs> Xanthius. Did I? As you are desperately looking around, that panic kind of rising in you in, in uncertainty, it's daytime, but uh, your mind, the shadows in between the buildings, the, the mouths, the faces, you from that dream, you're almost imagining them there. But also, like, your vision's like, is it blurry? Like, something, it's like something's wrong with your eyes, and you rub your eyes, and like, it's almost like you can see little motes of gold just passing over your vision, and it's it, so distracting. Yeah, you don't see anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, <coughs> a perception's so bad that I start to see things. <laughs> the man in the plate armor, the captain with the helm, and the coat, and the cloak steps forward. The citizens of Burnell, citizens of the Empire, please, there's no reason to be afraid. Uh, if you are law-abiding citizens, there's nothing to worry about. I am Captain Lucas Vicaro. I serve Duke Ignarius as the commander of his second talon. We have come here searching for a group of dangerous criminals wanted for murder and suspected heresy. They escaped from Ashen Rest and fled north. Our scouts believe that they pass, and he and he glances at the dwarven woman that was like shouting at him earlier when he says, "Our scouts believe that they passed through and may have entered the Burnell in the night. These are dangerous people, and they have committed a great crime. Until these criminals are found, or our investigation is concluded, travel south to Ashen Rest is prohibited." I mean, that's an audible gasp, at least from most of us, I mm -hmm. imagine. In a few days, a force arriving from Kelscaris that includes one of the Ecliptic Order, a sister inquisitor, will be making their way here to assist us in this investigation. I'm sure that by the time they arrive, we will have this matter firmly in hand. Those of you who are not residents of Burnell, the Duke's purse will make sure that your rooms are covered for this stay. We do not wish to inconvenience you. Uh, we ask for your cooperation. Myself and authoritor Zaron Tekis, and he gestures at the orc next to him. All of you, except Ophelia, as you are not a citizen of the Empire, all of you know what an authoritor is. An authoritor is a mixture of detective judge and jury. They enforce imperial law. As 
especially out in the villages and the towns away from the big cities, but even in the big cities, in the big cities, they're almost like lawyers um, and uh, detectives. Out in the, in the villages, they are more like the judge and, and jury and uh, kind of almost have a judge dread element to them, um, where they are basically the enforcers of imperial law. They have the unique status where they, because imperial law treats everybody the same, whether you are a dragon or a citizen, they are one of the few people that can actually accuse draconic nobles of crimes and, and, and you know, pursue the law against them. Um, they are basically uh, given this, this responsibility. You know, think of them as like these very elite uh, kind of uh, inquisitors and, and investigators and judges and things like that. And out in the villages, they are often like sent out to deal with crimes uh, because they won't normally have one locally. So they travel around a lot. They tend to be skilled in combat and magic and things like that. They're not necessarily something you would fear. They could almost be, for some people they might be, if you're a criminal, um, but they are also this kind of, yeah, they are the law of, they enforce imperial law. Um, but you would all know that. You like Anybody who's a citizen of the empire would absolutely know what they are. Um, and you see this like figure kind of like very sternly looking around. Um, he gestures, myself and the authorita, Zalon Takis, uh, we will be asking questions. My soldiers may ask you to uh, come and speak with us or to stay here. Uh, we hope that you will cooperate in this. These criminals must be found. They have committed a grave crime. They, we suspect them to be heretics, and they will bring doom upon Burnell and the Empire and my Duke. So we ask for your help. And he like looks around, and you can see most of the people in Burnell are like, oh my goodness, criminals, and they're sort of like whispering to each other, oh, I, I, I have not seen anybody, oh, oh, this is, this is terrible, and they're sort of whispering in that kind of gossipy way to each other. As they do, uh, you see the Duke kind of scanning around, and both the Duke and Authorita Zekis, uh, Tekis see this group of strangers that do not Aww. look like they belong here, and they begin to walk in your direction. And that's where we're going to take our first break. Oh, no! Oh. Oh, I don't want to go down from Moida. <laughs> Heresy. 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 That mm. is going to be it for part one. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you in part two after a short break. Take care. See you then. Bye! See you then. <laughs>
Welcome back to part two of Ulthea, the Dragon Empire, our brand new campaign here on High Rollers. In the previous part, we introduced our new characters, each one individually having a little moment here in the village of Burnell, uh, located in North Vale of Cauldra. Uh, each of the party members have interacted with someone in the village and we've learned a little bit about each of them, but just before we went on our break, uh, the party were witnessed as Captain Captain Lucas Vicaro, as well as Authoritor Zaron Tekis, arrived with a force of Duke Ignaris' army to inform Burnell that some criminals had passed by in the night and maybe in the local area, but more importantly, that until these criminals are found or this investigation is concluded, the road south into the deeper parts of culture, the bigger towns, the bigger cities, the road is shut and the way is closed as they need to find these people. Uh, as well as a force arriving from Kelskaris, the capital city to the north, is coming down in a pincer movement to try and help them locate and flush out these criminals and will arrive very shortly. Uh, and that is where we left off and where we pick up now. I will have, as you guys have just received all of this information, I would like... Everybody, unfortunately, except for Ophelia, <laughs> to make a history or a religion check Ooh, for me, a roll. Hey? History or religion. This, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, <laughs> banging. Yeah, that's Five. huge. Six. Six. Five, six, six. And? Oh, I rolled a two, so <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Oh, wow. Go from mid rolls to low rolls now. <laughs> What happened? Then, then you need. So right. Then you need no, no more. Um, <laughs> we live in the empire. Yeah. Uh, Gruff, just real quick. I know nothing. I, I've forgotten everything. <laughs> this is all. Who am I? This is new to Who me. Am I? Who are no, you? This, yeah. this is. Uh, you know, it's always a case of like, if they. I wouldn't make you roll for something that you would very obviously no. Hmm. Uh, but sometimes there are references to things and there might be esoteric or other elements that you might pick up on and that's what rolls are for. Um, but yeah, you guys are stood yep. in the market square. Uh, you can see that a small force of soldiers is basically occupying the gates now, having taken over from the local kind of town scout, the little militia that kind of patrols this place. They're really not much more than they watch the gates, they watch the walls, they make sure drunks don't cause too much trouble and on the off chance that some vault spawn in the woods nearby do attack, they are meant to defend defend the village, basically. Um, but in this case, that has now been completely taken over by uh, Captain Vaccaro's men and women of, of the uh, the Duke Ignaris's second Talon Battalion. Uh, they have begun to take over this whole thing and also begin to ask questions. You can see soldiers moving up, asking townspeople questions, and you know, asking them, getting taking down details and things like that. But the captain himself, as well as his companion. Authoritor Tekis, this orc with the glowing scar that runs down his neck and down into uh, below his jerkin, his, his black leather jerkin, uh, have begun approaching your unusual group. Um, what do you guys do at this point? What's the what's the vibes? What are we what are we thinking? How's people reacting? What's going on? Griffith has no fear. Mm -hmm. um, I think he, yeah, genuinely, he has a respect for law and authority um, mm -hmm. and. He knows he's not a criminal, so, you know, he... he knows, Standing ready. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. ready. He's ready uh, and eager to help them with their duty and also to watch how they do it because it's okay. interesting to him. Sure, absolutely. Rowan? Rowan's a bit nervous because mm -hmm. there's authority there and he's not quite used to that. Um, he's also nervous that maybe the people that he met yesterday are indeed criminals and he's fallen in with them and he's now a criminal himself. Right. The, the spiraling panic. Spiraling. Yeah, no. yeah, okay. And he will kill to escape. Yeah. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> uh, what about Ophelia? I think Ophelia would sort of be casting a curious eye towards the guard approaching them, but she'd also be sort of tapping a nervous long nail against her armoured leg, because it's another delay in mm. what she needs to do. Mm. So she's kind of annoyed. Yeah, sure, absolutely. I love it. And then obviously, Good old Percival just stood He's silently, dead. ready to hand. Like, yeah, just happy so to calm. assist you with whatever you need, That's as always. Nice <laughs> Daisy in her head just ask, um, they're looking for criminals. Um, should I be worried about this? They're, they're also sending people from Kilscaris. Um, What do? Help. Sure. 
do you, and because the relationship you have with your friend, you can kind of um, send memories and things like that, I'm guessing you kind of relate I relate it, what's just happened. Sure. Um, ah, little one, from what you've said, it sounds like this battalion have scouts and trackers. They're clearly searching for these criminals. But there was something that one mentioned, this sister inquisitor, this ecliptic order, I, you've heard, we've heard of them before, just in passing, but I've heard that they do not take kindly on those who have association with otherworldly beings. We do not want to be here when the Sister Inquisitor arrives, I think. That's what I thought, that's kind of what I was thinking, but these guys are okay just now, so if I, if we, if we can get out of this before she gets here, we should be okay. How quickly do you think she'll know? I suspect she will know quickly. They likely have means, methods, but Just also... Loud. No. no. Okay. So it can be done inside. Well, the that's a good point, yeah. For Daisy, is Daisy muttering this or is this telepathic? No, she's 100%, she's really focused. So she's probably just, to you, it looks like she's just zoned out completely right now. I'm probably gonna be like, hey, <laughs> hey. She just holds up a finger. Are you a, are you a criminal? <laughs> um, the last thing that your friend, uh, the last thing that your friend will probably say to you is, "The little one, I know your tendency, but these look like skilled trackers. I think it would be difficult for us to sneak past them. Maybe quicker to work with them, find a way to, uh, if we can fight, maybe we can find these criminals before this inquisitor arrives." and then we can leave, but it may be dangerous to try and sneak past them. Possible. I think you are capable of it, but there is risk. Be aware. Um, then I'll come back and go, huh? Are, are you a criminal? No! No, no, no. Oh, no, no, just uh, worried. About the others? I don't know. I have no idea. But, but that one still kind of scares me, and she'll just step away from Ophelia a little bit. I was going to say, you are all stood together. You can hear each other speak. Griffith is no criminal. Good. Griffith is nothing but truth and justice no, in his heart. I, I think... Xanthius. If I've still got these golden swirls in my... They're dying down now. They've, they've, they've passed I by this point. I think you'd almost see... If you're looking at me now, you'd almost see me kind of try and shake... Almost shake my head a little bit to try and clear... Uh, yeah, not not so obvious. It's like, <laughs> um, like a L'Oreal advert. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> With his he does Anakin have his beautiful Skywalker Anakin hair. Skywalker hair. Yeah. Oh come, no, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I come back to the to the world. Uh, travel prohibited. Being prohibited is not ideal. Um, did we see anyone yesterday in the tavern that could have been these criminals they're looking for? We have no description. We can ask them and then we can help so that we can get out of here. Oh, oh they're coming anyway. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to say, as you kind of finish that up, you hear the armoured boots of the captain and the very stealthy figure of the authoritor approach. Uh, good day, citizens. The captain kind of addresses you. I hope that you heard my announcement, but if I, you did not, let me introduce myself. I am Captain Lucas Vicaro, and he bows, a military bow. Uh, we are looking for these criminals that have passed through this area. Uh, we are hoping that perhaps we could speak with you for a moment of your time, ask if you have seen anything, uh, and just ask about your business here in the village if you do not mind as well. Any way that I could aid you, it would be my honour. Thank you very much. What was your, uh, please, uh, your name, sir? I am Griffith of Tomorrow Cove. Very good. Um, and yourself, sir? I'm Rowan. It's, it's a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Just Rowan. Just Rowan, yes. See. Uh, where do you hail from? Azar. Ah, Azar. Uh, I have no need to ask you, sir. You are not dressed for the weather here. I think you are dressed for a, a different climate. Uh, it is rather hot here, yes. Uh, I suppose it's just the way you're dressed as well. Like you, you, I think you look like you're from Ice Heart, mm. you know, whereas like Rowan is more sort of dressed a bit more Summary, naturally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he 
the captain's eyes glance on Ophelia, and then he sort of like rotates round, kind of like taking in these three. Um, Ophelia's eyes just narrow. Uh, he will uh, just also because I don't want to always do <laughs> this side of the table and then this side of the table. Uh, but he will kind of look over. His eyes linger on you, Xanthius. Um, and what and does he, his expression say? Well, he bows <laughs> his head, um, and there is a pause. Do you want to make an insight check for me? Uh oh. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> um. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna launch a dice. <laughs> Rowan is also thinking: Is anyone a criminal? Can I also do an insight? Sure. On this. Yeah. Mm. You can make an insight check. They're, they're, you don't. It's not necessarily for the right the same reasons. Yeah, like yeah. I, you know. Can 18. I, 18? Yeah. Yeah, everyone, yeah. People can make, yeah. So who is it you're... He's inciting you. I'm Rowan's inciting, inciting you. I think... Uh, so I know the captain's not a criminal. What did... What did... Uh, can get, what did Groff get? 22. Oh, 22. I didn't know if you were looking at other people as well, but from Xanthius you would probably see... Not... With, I guess, your judgement on this, but with a role that good, <laughs> I suppose, um, there is a nervousness and a worry, but since he has now spoken to the group, this captain, I think uh, Xanthius has eased a little bit more. Um, nice. That's, okay. that's the perception, okay. I suppose. There's definitely a nervous energy to Xanthius. Like, there's a little bit. But when you, this beat, Xanthius, it's actually kind of something that you're familiar with. Think that he's almost waiting for you to introduce yourself. There's like a moment where he's giving you the space to introduce yourself. Oh, uh, my apologies. Uh, Xanthius Oregon, um, what would you like to know from each of us? Uh, as you kind of take that moment to, to very formally introduce yourself, and you, especially since you gave your, your second name, he actually bows his head a bit deeper. My lord, uh, Oregon, you said, of uh, House Oregon. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, he nods his head, um, and then he looks around. He sees you, Daisy, almost kind of glancing over you, almost like, oh, there's just this kind of like little village girl here. I'm not that interested. Because you do look like a cult. You are a cauldron I citizen. You look, look like, like a villager. A cauldron, yeah. yeah, you look like a villager. So he kind of like glances over you, definitely turns back to Ophelia. Um, uh, please, uh, who, who am I speaking? Who do I have the pleasure of addressing? Sister Ophelia Delarosa of the House of Blood. And what is this interruption? <laughs> it's just the confidence every time she says it. House of Blood. The, blood. the captain almost doesn't really know how to respond. Uh, like, the, the thing that you've said, he just doesn't almost seem to really like process. He's like trying to figure it out. But the orc kind of steps forward and he places a hand on the captain's shoulder. I will speak to this one, Captain. I think that this is perhaps a little beyond your training. Uh, if you, perhaps if you speak with the others, and the authoritor will look to you and he bows his head, I am aware of the House of Blood and of your homeland. Oh, good. Perhaps, uh, he looks towards Percival. I rolled a natural 20, by the way. Oh! What? The first <laughs> of the show. Uh, on a on a check to see how much he knew about oh. the House of Blood, and he looks towards Percival, and he kind of looks towards you, and he you can see that he knows. It's just a look in his eyes. He knows, um, and uh, he he looks to you and says, "May I ask, sister, on what business are you here in our land? Diplomacy. You are you are an ambassador." Yes, and uh, education. Education? You've come to learn about our way of life here? I have, yes. What is the name of your sponsor? Who is it that sent you here? Countess Oromin Orsa. Oromin Orsa. He says, he bows his head, must apologize, it is not a name I'm familiar with, but I know of a little of the structure. He, you, he see, he writes it down. He's like, of a high rank. Yeah, he takes know. out a thing. He like writes it down. Checks will be made, but uh, I apologize for interrupting your business here in the Empire, but this is a grave matter. The criminals we are seeking 
murdered a priestess of our faith. Oh my goodness. I'm sure you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do that reaction one more time? <laughs> oh no! By the Grey Father. What a terrible tragedy. I'm sure you can understand the importance of such a crime. That I hope that you will extend us your immortal patience. We'll have it. Nods. As he's kind of speaking with Ophelia, this uh, this authoritor who definitely is still glancing at the rest of you, but like definitely kind of took the reins from the captain, who seemed quite flustered. Um, the captain kind of regains his composure. Uh, uh, and you, my dear, sorry, I did not catch your name. Daisy Thistleheart, sir. Mm, and you are, I, I, know a, I know a fellow cauldron when I see one. Are you from Good Vernell? Vine. Good Vine. You're from Good Vine, Daisy of Good Vine. And you see, uh, he doesn't note that, he doesn't write things down, um, but the authorita, as he's speaking, is writing everything down. Like, you can see him scribbling names in this almost jagged shorthand. Like, when you say names like Xanthius Oregon, it's like four strokes of whatever he's writing, but that seems to be enough for him to know what that means. Mm -hmm. um, uh, almost like he's writing in some secret language, or it's almost like uh, there's a slight touch of magic to whatever he's doing um, okay. as he's kind of jotting things down. But the captain will turn around and say, uh, well, as I mentioned, we are looking for these uh, criminals, three criminals in particular. Uh, they uh, escaped from, I must admit, they escaped from my men's custody, and so I have been charged with tracking them down. Uh, they fled to the north, uh, and we have, I am very confident, despite what the marshal of this village says, that they passed by, and I believe that they entered this village. Um, we are searching for them. Uh, do, you, do you have a description of these people? I do, indeed, in fact, uh, and he'll say, uh, Authorita, may I uh, forgive me for the interruption, Sister Ophelia, was it? Yes, it was, thank uh, you. Forgive me. Um, if I may borrow uh, the Authorita, uh, he has more of the details. Uh, of course. Uh, yes. And the Authorita nods. Uh, he flips through a few books, and you can see it's this leather-bound, like, black journal um, stamped with just this uh, eye symbol, basically. Um, and he flips through a back few couple of back pages. Um, yeah, it'd be an eye and a hammer. So it's like a kind of eye on, like, the head of a hammer, basically. I want um, that as a notebook. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> he flips back through a few pages, and he says, yes, yes. The three we are looking for is a trio. Uh, one is a male dwarf, approximately in his uh, sort of young, middling years, a little younger, uh, gray, grayish brown hair. Um, uh, his name is Beric Brassfist. Uh, Beric Brassfist. And he gives you a rough description uh, of this dwarf. Um, height and weight and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but he basically describes him as having, yeah, like a kind of gray and brown hair, shortly cut on the top of his head, a beard a braided and entwined um, with brass-like patterns of like jagged lines up his neck and around his face, basically. So he kind of has them like encroaching around his face. And you would know these to be like the dwarf growths, like the metal skin, basically, that they have. Um, he then says, uh, accompanying him was a human woman, a cauldron, uh, early 20s, uh, short, dark hair, shaved on one side, but the rest is kept close to her cheek. Uh, her name is Regina Violate, um, a jewelist, a bravo. Slender, tall, uh, gives you again rough height, rough description, kind of thing like that. And then finally, a figure called Yurgo the Eel, a disgraced kobold runaway from Erdas Kier. A thief and a lockbreaker. Black scales, short, no more than perhaps three feet tall. I think as he's uh, describing the dwarf and the woman, that's almost like looking around the crowd. It's almost like, oh yeah, that, that could be someone standing yeah. amongst this crowd now. Yeah. And then, yeah, a kobold. Yes, yes, but the kobold is kobolds. no. But they are known for uh, this particular criminal. I'm switching the voices. This particular criminal is uh, well-trained at stealth and uh, hiding. It may be that the other two have passed through. They may pass in plain sight. The other one may be hidden in shadows or hidden somewhere. 
but yeah, you're right. Dwarves and humans, very, very common all throughout the Empire. Basically, most of the places in the Empire, whether it's a village or a town or a city, they're very multicultural. Like, you, ancestry is a mix. You don't have, like, dwarf city, human city, halfling town. It's everybody lives everywhere. So hu a human and a dwarf literally could be describing so many. Like, they would definitely blend in. Um, the haircuts may be a little bit interesting, but uh, definitely kind of generic. Um, How do you suppose to gain access to the city? Or the village, sorry. Um, Are you asking me my suspicions on that? Well, I, they would have had to pass by the guard. We had some trouble ourselves uh, just last night. <laughs> you see the captain kind of rolls his eyes. Uh, forgive me, Lord Oregon. I do not believe the marshal of this village runs a particularly disciplined local guard. Uh, they panicked at the first sight of us and opened the gate. I could have been an imposter for all they knew. Uh, they seemed to be... I raised my hand. <laughs> yes? They, they didn't want to, to to let one of us in last night. So I think they're being quite thorough, actually. They let me in because I'm from Cauldron and I look like I am, but they didn't they didn't want to let other people in. Just keen to refuse me entry. On what grounds? Appearance alone. But they allowed you inside as you appeared to be Cauldron. Mm. The dwarf and the woman would have had the same appearance. They would have seen the same. But what do you remember? Do you, did these guards give you a name? Do you know who you spoke to? No, but I think I've seen them before because I've been around here. Could you describe them to the authority, please? Can I describe the guards that I saw? Yeah, very vaguely. They were pretty simple. It's just a hu uh, human and a dwarf, um, kind of very much country folk. Looked like they were like farmers' sons who have you know joined up as the militia instead yeah. of working on the farm. Um, not particularly special in any way. Um, but yeah, you clarify, them... not a. Male dwarf and a human woman. <laughs> we didn't just speak directly to them. No, no, tried no, to come no, into no, this place. No, it's fine. Like I said, dwarves are quite common a race in the yeah. empire, so it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, you give the description. The authority notes it down in the same way. It's like we will look into that. We will try and speak to them, see if they were. You said that they were on duty when you arrived last night. Is that the case for all of you? All arrived last last night in the evening. Mm -hmm. Kind of like notes that down. Did you see anything when you were entering uh, Burnell? Anything that stood out? Anything unusual or suspicious? If the answer is no, that is fine, please. Uh, I'd rather not be chasing up uh, imagined leads. Uh, anything that stands out. Very distracted by the smell of nice bread. Sorry. Pleasant enough smell, I'm sure I can understand. Yeah, good bread. Went straight to the Lordly Reigns for the night. The Lordly Reigns is one of the inns here? Yes, correct. You're staying there, madam? Yes. Right, sit down. Um, for the rest of you, anything out of the usual? Nothing to report from me. I was very much taken up with my ward here. Your ward? You a bodyguard, a traveling companion? I am his protector for now. I see. And what is your business here, Lord Oregon? Traveling, primarily. I resided in uh, a village on the Gildai border for a while, Rust End. I know it. I, uh, I stayed there for a while uh, before traveling to Kelskaris and now back oh. on my way. Heading home? Yes. Can you make a deception check for me, please? <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> deception, mm. hey. A slippery little boy. Ooh. Dragonborn. This dice really likes the number three. It really does. I got a five. The authorita is watching you. You seem nervous, Lord Oregon. Oh, well, at the threat of uh, criminals entering the village, they could be anywhere around us, so you can understand why I'd be scared. Mm, indeed, indeed. They just sort of let that moment hang for a bit, then they turn their attention elsewhere. I uh, don't do it. I'm um, not a criminal. No one is implying that you are my, my tall friend, but can I ask, what is your business here in the village? I, I have no business. Yes, you do. You were playing lovely music. I'm a bard. A musician? Yes. Do you travel around much? Yes, all the time. And where are you from? I'm from Azar. Small oh, that's right. I remember you saying. Yes, that's okay. He notes a few things down. Well... We will likely come by and ask more questions as our investigation and search continues. But like I said, you are all staying in the inns here, uh, yes? You are travellers, you are not residents of, of the village. Oh. Uh, 
We're staying in the Peony Post. So you and your traveling companion, uh, yourself? Yes. Yes, and you? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the Lord Lidrains is where you were staying. Correct. Well, the Duke's purse will cover your expenses. Whatever rooms you had previously, we will continue to pay for them as long as this investigation is ongoing. That's so I'd like to stay in Lordly Rains now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also pay for dinner expenses? We will provide a meal. It will be uh, it will be provided. It will be uh, a simple affair, but the Duke will make sure that you are fed. This is an inconvenience. We understand, the Duke understands that this is an inconvenience, but these criminals must be brought to justice and an, an extensive search is unfortunately required. These criminals seem to be quite elusive. Uh, it will hopefully be I suspect he kind of considers uh, the force from Kelscaris and the Sister Inquisitor. Uh, they should they should be arriving in the in the next few three to five days. We suspect that they three will arrive. Three to five days. Okay. They will be searching the lands. They will be sending out their forces, looking for tracks, looking for places for these criminals to hide. Uh, if that is too long a duration for you, then all I can ask is that the more help you can provide us in our investigation, uh, the better. Uh, I will make it clear, and he kind of looks, because how many of you actually carry, like, obvious weapons? Because I actually don't think many of you do, do you? I've got a dagger on my belt, but it's not like a mm. big intimidating yeah. thing. No, really. nothing for me. Xan Xanthius doesn't, you've got the staff, and, and a sh do you have a shield, or? I have a shield, yes. Okay, so you have, like, a shield on your back and the staff. But it looks unimpressive. Yeah, it kind of looks beaten up. Um, a whip in my hip. You've got a whip, and you kind of have armor whip. as well, yeah. like, yeah. Um, <laughs> whip, hip. Um, and Rowan doesn't have any obvious weapons. No, he is it? a weapon. Uh, a hidden dagger, but yeah. he can't see it. Yeah. And he left his longsword in his room. Okay, nice. Um, so he looks around. I, You do not strike me as mercenaries, but there is a bounty on these criminals, uh, whether they've ideally brought in alive, but uh, for their heads, it is a bounty is offered. And I'm sure that uh, Duke Ignarius would be happy to, would be, offer his favor to those who help him in this. These criminals, uh, they murdered a priestess, and uh, and uh, that is something that cannot be forgiven. So. When did they murder the priestess? Uh, the authoritor will look to you and say, Two days ago, oh. there was other peculiarities as well. They, it looked like they had broken in to steal something, but we are not sure exactly what was taken. Uh, they stole relics, magical goods? We found within the shrine of Misara, one of our saints, he says to you, because he knows that you wouldn't know who the religion are, he knows that you guys would know who Saint Misara is. For your benefit, by the way, Saint Misara is a saint of creation, uh, the forge, craftsmanship, and things like that. Um, uh, working of metals and stuff like that. You guys, that's all very familiar to the citizens of the Empire, but for Ophelia, you would know who that is. Um, he says, one of our divine saints, uh, this shrine, they broke into it, we found that the priestess had been murdered and a, a hidden alcove in the chamber had been opened. Oh. But there is no record of anything being stored there and any none of the other novices and acolytes knew about it. They did not seem to know it was there. We questioned the criminals. They said nothing. Um, we took their belongings. We found nothing really out of the ordinary. Um, he kind of thinks for a minute and then just, you know, carries on. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. We suspect, or I suspect, that they were hoping to find something that may not have been there, uh, killed the priestess trying to gain information, uh, and then in their fumbled attempt to flee, we captured them. Uh, it is the nature of their escape which is quite perplexing, for they had been in custody, they were being transported to uh, uh, the prison near Pharos, to Deep Glimmer Prison, uh, in the mountains, but uh, during the transport, their shackles were broken somehow, uh, and they escaped. Fleeing. We will help. We will. Yes. All of us. Yes. Yes, I think well, we should. I, I would love to help. I, I'm not going to press you all to help, but I would love to help uh, the Duke. 
It would be a great honor to carry out justice. Your support, citizens, is very appreciated. And uh, obviously, if you do, as I mentioned, uh, there is a bounty. If you are, I do not know how much skill and, and experience you have with fighting, but uh, these criminals are, be cautious. Uh, they're dangerous. They've they've murdered a woman and uh, they've been engaged in, in criminal activity. So do be careful if you pursue them. But any assistance you can provide in finding them, learning more about their movements, why they came here to Burnell, how they got in, where they've gone, any of that information would be very useful. I should make it clear that should you come to us with information and then we go out and find them, there would be no bounty available. It would That would be my honor to capture them as criminals. But if you yourself were to bring the criminals in, then the bounty would be yours and the Duke's favor along with it. Unfortunately, the way that in these out of the way places, uh, far from the towns and cities, we are often reliant on individuals who seek bounties, uh, mercenaries, bounty hunters and the like. Uh, we will be busy searching the woods and the rivers and the nearby lands. So, yes, any help you can provide would be very useful. Of course. And he smiles. Um, Rome will step forward, look down at the captain, mm -hmm. gripped by the upper arm, to offer a bounty and free night's stay. Such a generous duke. He nods. He's like, my. Duke Ignarius, my Lord Duke, is a very generous dragon, and uh, I am very proud to serve him loyally. He, like, nods in your direction. I will do everything I can. Thank you. Thank you. And he, like, pats you on the shot, like, on the arm, just like, thank you, my, my good friend, my good man. Uh, that is very so kind of thank. Nice, and he kind of looks around. Um, he definitely, like, like, I think the captain, like, kind of does catch your eye graph because there is something knightly about him. You don't know if he is a knight, but he has that kind of demeanor. Um, uh, he doesn't have the emblems and the heraldry, like, that you've heard of, but he definitely has that kind of manner and things like that to you. So he definitely catches your eye. And you think that, like, he lingers on you for a moment, sort of, some of the things you've said, probably looking at, like, your shield and your staff, looking at you, Ophelia, with your armor and your whip. And the others, he's like, okay, well, they don't seem to be particularly on, but he looks at the two of you and says, uh, yes, just be careful if you go after these uh, individuals. As I said, they are dangerous criminals. Um, if there is anything else you wish to know, uh, myself and the authorator will be nearby. We will be speaking with people, investigating matters. Uh, if that is all, citizens, thank you for your time. He just nods his head and bows. The authorator does not bow, but does incline his head in all of your direction, and then just turns and uh, uh, walks away. Blessings to you. <laughs> Gruff would give a almost reverential bow back to the captain. Sure. Like, yeah. 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 He like like nods his head in, uh, in kind of polite respect as well. Um, I feel you say swift investigation, His Grace. Thank you. Yeah, they seem to head off and begin you know, their own getting getting to what they need to do. Um, but you can see that the, the the south gate, the one that leads to the south road and the Imperial Highway into the other cities, there's like five guards just stood there watching it. You can see, you know, if you were to look out beyond the walls, like, you know, kind of, uh, you know, look past them, you would see little pockets of like one or two. Some of them have got hat, like uh, drakes. You can see like these kind of hunting drakes, like these smaller dog sized like lizards. Um, they're using those and they're like trying to find trails and tracks and scents and things like that, um, sniffing all around. You can see a few other soldiers speaking to figures like the Reverend and like going up to the inns and like asking people there. You see, uh, I feel like you see Raoul being sort of, uh, you know, asked a few questions by the soldiers and things like that. And eventually the authorities and the captain start going one to one, like going to each house and stuff like that. Leaving you guys with a little bit of moment of uh, quiet peace to talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so, are we investigating this now? Absolutely we are. It would be advantageous to do so. We should do that before the... Um people come from Kilskaris because that's a lot of effort for them. Yeah. Also, what was it, five days away? That won't do. Um, but where do we begin? I don't, I, anyone, does anyone here happen to be a murder investigator? No. No, 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 me neither. No, good. Okay, great. So where do we begin? What do we do? Who do we speak to? I suppose. Begin by asking questions. 
Okay. Where were you last night? I was with you. Ah, see? It's a good start, though, right? It's a great question. Easy, perfect. Um, Has anyone been to this this, this village they fled from? No. No. Have I been to that village? Uh, It's not a village. Ashenrest is a very big town. Um, I don't know if I would have been there. (laughs) No, it's it's a very, it's like one of the main towns. Uh, It's the main town north of Feros, like the big city of Kaldra. Um, And it's between here and Kelskaris. And yeah, Ashenrest is is kind of the next big stop, like for a traveler on their way between the cities. Um, And it's, yeah, it's a big walled town. It's very prosperous. It's the... um, the Duke's where the Duke lives, the Duke of, of Northvale, that's his residency and, and his kind of like main main settlement. Would I have passed through it if I was No, you uh, came north I... as well from Kelskaris. So this is the first place you've been in Kaldra. So it's on the way. Like... It's on the way south yeah, okay. towards Feros, yeah. I'm, I'm working the other yeah. way. So so going <laughs> from that town to north, mm-hmm. they would have to pass through Burnell, or could they have gone? They could have gone into like the uh, the Rust Whale Woods and the mountains, uh, the Blade of the Empress Mountains, which is to the it's on the uh, east eastern side of the valley. Yep. Whereas Burnell is a little bit more to the west near the Obsidian Mountains. Um, so they could have gone and sort of like tried to skirt Burnell, but it would be that's hard land. That's like you know real tough okay. forest hills mountains. Could be a good place to hide. They might not have come here, but. The, the captain seemed to be convinced that they did. Yeah. He did mention something about the marshal disagreeing with him, but, you know, there's... Uh, and you can see the, the, these other characters. You can see, like, uh, the various people that you've met in the village. You can see lots of other characters chatting. Um, and you do see that accountant woman, the librarian-looking woman, and this very angry-looking, battle-hardened dwarf woman nattering together and sort of, like, casting daggers around uh, as they're looking around. Um, but, yeah, they, they, they possibly could have avoided Burnell if they'd gone into the Roswell Woods and the mountains. Right. Um, but that's probably, I mean, it's certainly dangerous doing that at night. Like, places like mountains and forests are where Voltspawn like to hide. Like, these creatures that have escaped from the Proto Magi vaults and now run amok around Althea. It's where bandits lurk. You know, it's where beasts, like hungry wolves, like, it's dangerous land to be out there, basically. It's why most people travel the highways, the Imperial highways and the, the trade roads. Um, Rowan, uh, you were here when we first arrived. I didn't do it. I'm not saying you did. Okay. I don't believe you did. Um, I'm very nervous right now. You were performing yes. in the PE post um, yes. when we arrived. So you would have had a good sight of everyone that arrived in that no. place. He had no? his eyes closed. Yes, I focus entirely on my. The uh, entire time. The pebbles are very important. They have a story. Yes. The pebbles. I yes, remember the song about the pebbles. Yes. Yes. Beautiful piece, by the way. It means so much to me to hear such. Oh, thank you. Thank well, you. It's quite all right. Um, but uh, but if you didn't see anyone in the peony post, I don't recall seeing anyone like this there. Um, did anyone? You barely could recall that these three were here. I. Does anyone else recall? At least. They were very tired. You looked like you were going to pass out. I well, I almost did, but. You looked like death. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a compliment coming from? Could be. Could be. Oh, lovely. You weren't staying at the peony post. <coughs> no. Under the lordly reigns. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anything um, there? Innkeep, assistant, myself, and Percival. That was all. Okay. Um, well, if. Uh, if they didn't stay there, they must have stayed somewhere during the night, right? Maybe they didn't stay at an inn at all. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So we might be able to... They'd be hiding. They, they could be hiding. They could... They might not still be here. Just a reminder Is of Percival that. a kobold in a robe? <gasps> no. Just had to ask, you know, cover our... Cover our... Are they... What is a kobold? It's a good question. Uh, it's, um... Tiny dragon. Yes. Very small. small. Very small. Uh, what is a dragon? As a very clear point, they are not dragons. Cobbles. Look similar. They they are they are draconic lizard. light, lizard. but they are. She yeah. would say lizard. Well, yes. Like a, like a lizard. Like, very strong distinction like, in this world. <laughs> what is and is not a dragon. Oh, um, you see those drakes? Like they're like two to three feet. Like they're they're pretty small. The uh, the guards had like drake. 
Hunting drinks. Uh, hunting Sniffing dogs. Drinks. Mm-hmm. Like that yeah. sort of thing. Those things over there, imagine those, but more Small. um, smaller. Smaller. Standing on two feet, maybe. And you are ruled by dragons. Yes, but not Correct. kobolds. They're different. Kobolds. So the lizard. Like a lizard. So not these mighty beasts. No. No, mightier. Kobolds. Mightier. Mm. Proud. Mm. Big. I see. Honorable. Okay. Caring, kind. Uh, the whole gamut. They <laughs> sound lovely. Yeah. 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 I've never met one. No. Has anyone else? Oh, this is. We're getting Tom. Give me a deception check. <laughs> I've never met one. <laughs> It says the man who is the like got a golden word. dragon tail and he's wearing He looks like a dragon. Oh, actually, no, yeah, no, okay, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't met a dragon. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It's a very yeah. different thing. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. That's mm. a good point. Um, okay, we're getting we're getting distracted already. We are getting distracted. So, uh, what, what, what about the guards that we've spoke to on the way in? Uh, if they may have just let these people in? Perhaps they would have, uh, they would be able to identify these people. At least then we could confirm they're actually in this village. Well, if the woman looks like she's from Cauldra, they would have just let her in like they let me in. But it's not. If they let in a. I don't think they would have let in a lizard. Just saying. Unless the lizard wasn't let in. Could have snuck in. If this was a, a thief, you described him as a thief, right? He's sneaky. Sneaky. Quiet. Small. Shadowy. Those two look quite angry at the soldiers. Isn't that the Reeve? Maybe. You, yeah, the woman with the glasses and the bodice, yep. the one who looks a bit more noble. That's she, Rose point now, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that, I mean, she definitely looks, a Reeve is basically like a mayor. It's like the mayor of like a human settlement or like a non-dragon settlement. Dragons being the rulers, um, but they don't want to deal with the minutia of like actually running a town. Uh, so Reeves are normally installed to basically be the accountants and, atta- and the, the tithe collectors, basically. Um, and they run the towns and villages and things like that. So the woman uh, that Rowan is pointing at, this kind of elderly, like, Looking woman with the glasses and the bodice, um, she is most likely to be the Reeve. Uh, you didn't catch her name. Um, I don't think Daisy would probably know it just off the top of her head. Uh, the dwarven woman next to her, based on her appearance, the weapons, the armor, she's barking orders at some of the militia who are like kicking dirt and don't really know what to do. Um, you suspect that she is the marshal, the marshal being like the local sheriff kind of. Um, they're the one who are supposed to like train up a town, mili- or a village militia and stuff like that and, and basically keep the peace in, the, in a village. They have like a very minor amount of power to like dispense justice or call in an authority to adjudicate a case and things like that. Um, they may know stuff. Uh, uh, we can we can certainly talk to them if, if, you, if you'd like. Okay, I'll you... walk over. Sure, <coughs> yeah. Is it just Rowan or are you guys going to go as a group? Wait, is he doing the talk? Okay, let's go with him. Okay, we'll go. All right, yeah. You guys make your way over. Uh, you can, you, you, there's like a hushed conversation as you're kind of approaching that. Um, and then as you approach, the uh, the dwarven woman looks up, puts a hand on the axe belt. Uh, what do you want? Who are you? And she kind of like glances around. Excuse me. We are now bound by duty and honor to find these criminals that killed a priestess. The dwarf woman kind of rolls her eyes, but the, uh, the reeve, the elder looking woman is just like, Oh, yeah, yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, very good. Yes, we must help the, um, the good captain and the authoritor in apprehending these criminals. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your help, uh, visitors, of yes. course, yes, of course. Um, uh, is there something you need from myself, or...? Uh, well, uh, we were just wondering if there was any information we might be able to glean from you. Oh, oh no, no! I'm, I'm afraid, as I as I have mentioned to the good captain, I, I'm afraid I I know nothing. And my my marshal, uh, Marshal Vagra here, assures me that there is no way that these criminals could have entered uh, into Burnell. Um, isn't that right, uh, Vagra? Yes, I, there's no way. Uh, my 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 men and women are too trained for that. Uh, there's no way. It's it's this captain trying to lay the blame on us provincials, these us country folk. This he's just trying to make himself look better, saying that they came through our village. Uh, and, I mean, he's uh, the one who fucked up. Well, language. Um, I think uh, looking around when she says my men are too tra- too well trained, like I look around as the people kicking their feet and stuff, right? 
I almost... You don't even need to roll for this. Like, um, I mean, if you want to, like, incite her, like, because also it's such an obvious lie. I mean, like, I almost if... wordlessly want to, with scepticism on my face, like, looking around this group and then back at her, like... Yeah. Mm. What? <laughs> she just she looks at you hard, what? We walked straight in last night. Oh, clearly you're visitors. It's a, it's a trader's town. We allow visitors in. Why would we not? So, but if that be, then how would you not know that a human and a dwarf are not traders too? Well, because my men and women are very well trained. If there was these criminals, they'd be looking for hidden weapons and making sure they weren't bringing in trouble. Have you got something to say to me, lion man? And she looks up at you and like kind of puffs her chest out a little bit. Like, sounds like you've got something to say. You're saying I'm doing a bad job. No, no, he's not saying that. Sounds like what he's saying, big man. I, well, you got a problem. I have no problem here. Good. What if it's a, I poke, I'm behind Rowan at the moment. <laughs> I poke my head around and go, what if it's a really small lizard that got in because they're really small and you didn't see them? Snuck in, it's not my fault, it's not my problem. I haven't seen one around of you. I think we'd all know a black kobold that was running around, black scaled kobold, sneaking about, we'd see it. No. If you were, well, looking, looking for it. Black scale. We've been looking for it. Yeah. Okay. They told us it was. Okay, I thought it was like that might have just been a piece of information. No, they yeah. told us. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sort of, sort of says like, hey, we're looking, we're looking. Like I said, we've we're duty bound as well to help the captain in this investigation, even if he has fucked up. But uh, we've not found anything. So it is of your opinion that these people are no longer in the village or never even arrived? I don't think so. I mean, look, you're free to go and inspect the walls and talk to people if you want, if you're looking for that bounty, maybe. And she kind of like looks around, trying to gauge your reaction to that uh, when she says, like, are you looking for the bounty? Ruin's nodding. <laughs> okay, Ruin's Ron, <laughs> just actively, like, <laughs> nodding his head. What about Gruff? What's, like, Gruff's thinking? I think Gruff is, um... His body language has definitely changed to a more aggressive... Like, he's unfurled, mm. he's standing wide, mm. he's gripping his staff. He does mm. not like what this person is saying. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. thinks shoddy. Yeah. Shoddy. <laughs> failure of duty. Yeah. Um, Daisy just changes and goes by in Gruff instead. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're looking more aggressive. A lot more aggressive. Rowan's like, sort of like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. how, like, when cats get a bit agitated, their tails start to, like, <laughs> yeah. swish yeah. and yeah. flick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. His tail is, like, just flicking around, and it's just, you know, yeah. he's he's definitely very open in this as well. He's not trying to hide it. Yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. very, like... But, well, and the, the, well, the woman, Valgra, uh, Marshall Valgra, has seen it and is kind of, like, jeering, kind of almost sneering, like, just trying to chat. Like, he's almost, like, saying, like, yeah, come on, start a fight. Like, I want to you know come on come at me like there's, there's she's so aggressive like in this thing and she turns around to the reeve and says like i should get back to it reeve mayor i i need to get in you know help this captain out this failure and you know we'll we'll track these criminals down don't you worry um and she kind of like and the, the reeve is just like oh yes marshal if, if you say so of course we we must uh uh, we must find them as quickly as possible, uh, you know, ensure that there is no problems, that they don't endanger our citizens. Absolutely, absolutely. The duke, duke, the duke's business here in the in in the village. We, you know, this is meant to be a prosperous place. He wants this to be the next star on the map. We can't have this. No, no, no. Um, and she sort of begins opening her books and like consulting things and things like that. Um, totally becomes distracted and like you know wanders off almost. Um, the dwarf looks around. you good day, citizens. And then just bye. Swaggers off. <laughs> that went well. <laughs> uh, well, um, I think we should look at the walls. The walls. Yeah. You all see, by the way, like gruff, just like, <laughs> just like not moving. <laughs> that woman is a disgrace to her uniform. She has neglected her duty, and this village is now harboring criminals who murdered an innocent priestess of the faith. They are here. They might be. They well, we should check the don't wall. believe so. That's at least that. At least we got that information there. Why mortal nights are a waste of time? Huh? What nights? What? She had mortal lives. Oh, mortal lives. Mm. Yeah. 
yeah, no, but knights. we... Oh. oh. Not lives. Mortal lives are delightful. Um, you have knights where you're from? Yes, we do. Knights and soldiers. What are their oaths? What are their duties? To serve the Grave Father. That is all. Are they noble? Well, I suppose they have to be. Noble is all they can be. Do they mm. fight for justice? They fight for their house. Uh, uh, are you noble? Mm. The, the word noble doesn't have the same meaning no. here, but but you know a little bit about Ilmerin culture because uh, you've been trained on it by the Countess. Um, and you, I think the like for Ophelia, like in a, in a sense you are like you have been accepted by the house, you have been given the title, but you're you're a fledgling, like you 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 have status and power, which is what you think. Xanthius is asking, like, are you noble? Do you, are you a person of importance? And you are, kind of. You're not the most, but you definitely have some status. Um, just to put some context to, like, the cultural differences there, because, like, that word wouldn't mean the same thing to you as it does to, to these guys. For what you're asking, yes. Yes, I am. That is good to know. Because she's... Yeah, a lot. <laughs> um... I'm in danger. Okay, so we wish to investigate the walls. We could speak to the guards. I would very much like to not be here for much longer than this. Same. Same. Why? I just... The village is lovely. It really is. Mm. I've got places to be. Uh, do you intend to stay here after? When we've been given free bed and board for many days, I don't wish to overstay the generosity. But I see no reason to have such a nice cozy bed for a few days. What is your lifestyle? I don't understand. How do you live your life? Oh, to the fullest. Oh, lovely. How did you come to this village? Walking. But where, uh, where from? From Azar. Okay. Uh, and, uh... Did you happen to pass through? I didn't do it. Sorry? I wasn't the criminal. I'm not asking. <laughs> I just I just wanted to know more about you. Right. Did you happen to pass through Kelskaris? Any other settlements? You would have, yes. The, oh, the outskirts place. of it, the outskirts of it. The big, big city. Yes, yes. Yes, but I, I didn't like it so much. Too many people. Same. Yes. Didn't like it either. It's overwhelming. Noisy. Yes. So I, I went around it as much as I could. Okay. And now I'm here. And it sounds like you know this place. Well, I've been here before, but I'm I I came the other way. I didn't go into the. But if these if these criminals would have come to this village, they wouldn't have gone. Elsewhere, do you happen to know of uh, places they could hide? Uh, anywhere. They might have stayed, if not in any of the inns, because we didn't see them. I mean, you can make a um, make a nature check for me, Daisy. Um, and uh, I was going to say, depending on what you roll. Well, I rolled an eighteen on the dice. Then I will say nothing. <laughs> eighteen. Cool. Um, eighteen. You think when Xanthius asks you places to hide, hiding is something you know quite well, um, and it's something that your friend knows quite well as well. Um, would you ask? Would you ask Nim? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What you? What would you? What, what were you thinking? Like. In my, I'd be like, and I'll kind of walk a little bit away and go. Nim. Yes, little one. Where could they have gone? That's near here. But it's not here. It's not Kilscaris. It's not a big town. Can you try your best to remember the map in that shop uh, in the town? that we were last in a, a, a few months ago. Remember the map of this area? Do your best to remember it for me. I'll try and yeah. remember and, it. And yeah. you've got a good memory. Like, you kind of imagine it. You kind of almost visualize like a sketch in your notebook, right? You kind of imagine you're drawing it out and you hear Nim kind of like, yes, yes, very good. And, and almost like helping you fill out the map, this other presence in your mind fills in blanks and adds like, mountains and trees and details, almost creating this map for you. Um, very loose and very sketchy, but you remember, yeah, yeah, there's near here, 
Nim would say, I remember this village as we were planning our journey here. There is a river that runs from the mountains, the Black Rock River, and near its source, there is a mine. And then to the south of the river is the forest that they call the Flintthorns. Perhaps these, if, if it were I and my legion, I would have found a place in the woods or the mountains to hide away until an enemy had passed, until our foes had depleted their resources searching for us, find somewhere that we could stay in. I will be, I'll scribble it down in my book. And just... <laughs> she just walked off. Make some, make some scribbles and then come back. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I think, maybe, there's a river there, nearby, you don't know where, there's a river, and it Looked goes around. into the mountains, and there's a mine, and then also, there's forest. So either of those places are nearby, but not in a town, and you could hide there. Oh. I will crudely draw roughly a map from what mm -hmm. I remember from just mm -hmm. the conversation. Why are you just drawing a map? It, yeah, like how, how... It's not very good, but it's a rough idea of where it is, but I don't know. I, I've never been to those places. Yeah. You don't have proficiency with cartography good. tools, do you, Daisy? I don't think I do. No, I don't think no. you do. Okay. So um, this isn't like just so it's not like a... <laughs> this is very rough and basic. Yeah. Like It's basic. Yeah. Online. Like in Daisy's mind it was a lot clearer because she has help, but when she sketches it out, it's it's like a very loose drawing. Like I can I can do a very loose drawing for you if you want. So like Yeah, she's um, she can she can doodle and stuff, but maps are not. <laughs> and you you do these drawings. That's a this is a, a passion of yours? I suit. It, it just passes the time, helps me remember things. Very nice. The Grave Father would very much like that. Um, in what way? In a way that we celebrate our customs. Okay. We appreciate the arts. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Sounds lovely. It does. Mm, I'd like to go there. Oh, it's quite lovely. And what was what was it that you hailed from? Azar. Azar. What's the Azar? It's cold. Cold. Up north, at least, the storms. Is it as cold as Ice Heart? I don't know. Oh, both from the north. That one sounds, sounds very cold. What's Ice Heart like? It is the furthest of the northern coast. Mm. Um, Thanks. surrounded by icy mountains, icy rivers, icy seas. There's a lot of ice mm. there. This is the warmest I've ever been. It's a bit strange for me. Yeah, the air here is thick. Mm. Mm. I'm used to the chill. Yeah. Well. Could I try and... I guess... I want to look in the, the direction of the river. Mm -hmm. And can I go to the wall at, like, that part of the... Yeah, well, the closest point. So it's, it, the town isn't right on the river. No, it's kind of like, like nearby, but you can go to like roughly, roughly where. where I think sure. that you could pass to the forest. Yeah, right? easily, easily, because you've actually already been there. Um, it's right by that cottage with the orange tree, like where you were this morning. That's like right near, that's the, probably the closest part of the city to the river. Um, and that's where you were this morning. Okay. Oh, this is where I got the oranges from. Right. They're nice. I got permission. They gave me permission. That's good. Um, did you see any criminals? No, but then I'm not I wasn't very good drawing. at this. I definitely didn't see Lizard. Okay. I, I, so where should we was go Was the now? woman I saw this morning, she was just a regular woman, or did she? Do you recall her? She was broad-shouldered, very athletic build. Um, she had like a big burlap sack on her uh, shoulders. Um, and she headed towards the north gate of the city, so it would have led to the north, and, and that's where you remember. You, she, her name was Marion. Anything else is whatever you remember. Did she have... I, I wasn't writing notes at that point. Did she oh. have dark hair? 
uh, not in the manner that the the authority described. No, she was like a brown kind of longer hair, um, but she definitely had like a yeah, like a broad build, like definitely a some a physical work kind of like a mm. athletic body kind of thing. Um, well, Graf, this seems based on what you've told me about oaths and justice and that sort of thing. This seems exactly like your thing. I think thing is the right word. But is there... Uh, what would you do? Pretend you're you. Okay, I pretend you're me. Mm. Now, what would Groff do in this situation? Uphold the principles of virtue, righteousness and justice. Okay, we can do that throughout. Mm -hmm. Everyone, remember to uphold the principles of virtues and justice. Righteousness. Sure. Now, <laughs> after that, or during, where would you go first? See, I'm not actually quite sure. I'm quite new to this. Sorry? This lifestyle. This calling of righteousness and justice and pursuing of it. Were you previously a criminal? I was previously a fisherman. How previous, oh. how recent? Was I the first person you've helped? Maybe. Well, you did so in astounding fashion. You will honor me with your kind words, Lordling. Lordling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will get that character reference, I. You will, you will, you will. It would be extra good coming from a dragonborn. I just didn't know that I'd be your first and only so far I character reference. I didn't know reference. that you'd be my first and only character reference so far. Okay. Where, how, Everyone else just told me to bugger off. How recently did you leave Iceheart? Uh, not long ago. But it, how long would it have taken me to travel down on? Hey, Wikipedia. A long, a long time. Mm. Um, you've been you've been on the road for a good while now, like using up your supplies. On foot, it would probably take you close to uh, not fully like a month, but like certainly close to um, a site. Uh, yeah, like a kind of a month. Like uh, the calendar in uh, in Altho is a little bit different. Uh, uh, the time here is broken down into each, uh, there are, uh, various, there are, I believe, seven months, if you want to call them that, um, uh, and they're broken down into three periods of, uh, of 12 days, um, uh, and it probably would have taken you, and each one is like first moon, mid moon, and late moon, so they're called the, the moon phases, basically. Um, it would have taken you since the beginning of... Most of Green Tide, which is like one of the the months, basically like the spring. Um, According uh, to the cycle of the stars and the moon, uh, most of a Green Tide. Yeah, yeah. Since I left my village, yeah, Green Tide is the first month, basically. It's like it's not. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, you're currently in Stormfall. Um, you would have left just after the beginning of first moon of Green Tide, mm -hmm. and it's taken you probably about 28, 30 odd days to basically walk wow. all the way from Ice Heart wow. through Azar into Kelscaris, around Kelscaris, and then down into Cauldra. Like, you've been on the road a long time. Um, I've, I've been walking a long way from uh, Tremoro Cove, up in the north. Okay, um, and now you've ended up here, in the middle of an investigation. Aye. The perfect time to shine. Okay. I've read a lot of scrolls on this kind of thing. Okay, good. The first thing is perhaps to find witnesses to investigate bolt holes. Inve uh, bolt holes. Sorry. Where I come from, we have a lot of smugglers and pirates. You find coves and crannies and caves where they bring their wares. Okay. We also call them bolt holes. Bolt holes. Find bolt holes. Like the mine. Like the mine. I the see. Forest. I'm picking up now. Okay. <sighs> Hiding spots that's mm. not in Burnell, because the marshal said they definitely didn't come here. Where, where a criminal can be a criminal, because being a criminal, they're going to be depraved. Okay, well, consider the, the mine to be bolt hole number one. I think. Okay, well, the mine. This is the forest way. The mine is on. Is that way? 
as you guys are having this conversation, because you're all having this conversation outside this cottage that Daisy's taken to you at the part of the wall, right? Yeah. Um, you do kind of hear a, like uh, the the door of the cottage kind of opens, and this older looking man. Uh, you can see that he looks very kind of uh, infirm, a bit quite vulnerable. He's like. But could I ask you, please, to keep your conversation down? Oh. oh. My, my wife and I did not get much sleep last night, and we are quite tired in all this commotion with the guards. Would you would you mind awfully just... Oh, Daisy sorry. will go up to them with the notebook. Oh, hello. Hi. You didn't get much sleep last night? I met Marion earlier. Oh. Very lovely. Oh, really are, nice. are you the one who was taking the oranges? Oh, okay. this Yes, I've got one. Oh, well... It, it, Marion said that I could have an orange. No, that's fine. If Marion said it was fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's honestly not a problem, but, um, yes. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, we're, we're looking for criminals that might have passed through. Did you see anything last night? Oh, for the last two nights? Oh, um... Well, I must be honest. My wife and I, we are... Our, our daughter Marion looks after us. We we go to bed quite early. Uh, there was some commotion and noise, but uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, Marion told us it was just something, uh, a beast or something that got loose out in the garden. She said she would take care of it. Um, there was quite a smell, uh, quite a pungent uh, odor. Um, really? No. Well, uh, how would you describe the smell? Oh, um... Oh, it's it's difficult to say. A sort of uh, a mixture of sort of a sweat, but also kind of musky, like a like a like a, a hunting drake or some such. Like someone had been run like a lizard. Uh, I suppose. Uh, yes. I mean, well, Marion works in the mines, and, and you know we're quite used to the odor, sweat and odor and things like that. Um, but, I, but it was more than that. There was a there was a. The smell of the earth about it, a very earthy smell. Is, uh, is, is Marion working today? Yeah, she works every day, yes. Yeah, she, she works so hard she, to look after us. Um, she, she funds things. And then many of the villagers are miners. Uh, they provide a lot of service. The Duke's, Duke's quite proud of his mine, you see. Um, she's the foreman. We're very proud of her. Is she? Yes. You should be. Thank you, <laughs> thank you travelers, thank you. Bolt um, hole one. What? But we were thinking of potentially to pass the time. We've got some time while the doors, uh, gates are locked now, down now. Uh, of maybe working a little bit in the mines. Uh, oh, this uh, your foreman daughter. Does she happen to keep a map of the mines? Uh, not. I mean, not in the house. No. I mean, they they, they know the mines. Marion and the miners. They know the mine off. But they, I imagine if they had such a, a map, it would be up, up by the. Uh, by the entrance, they, they have like little camp up there that they keep things, I think, things like that. Normally they have uh, the wagons that they bring the goods back down in and they send them off to Ash and Rest for the Duke and such. Ash and Rest. Uh, we... Okay. Thank you. You're more than Very, more, uh, very helpful. Uh, I'm, I don't know what we're helping, but we're glad to. But, but, uh, uh, Will you be leaving, or...? Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. Oh, Apologies, please. oh, thank you. <laughs> Good rest. No, no problem at all, thank you. Can I take an orange for the road? Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you. I guess. <laughs> thank Pray you. Father bless you. Have a good rest. Uh, thank you. Oh, uh, they, they look very confused when you say that to them, very kind of concerned. And then when you hear the door shut, you just hear, yes, they're going to leave now, dear. <laughs> I know, they were very loud. We should find Mary. We should find Mary. Uh, but let's... the garden. <laughs> very good, very orders. good bolt hole finding, I must say. And very impressive. Yes. Good roll. I did good. I know things sometimes. Rarely. Sometimes. They won't let us out, will they? Oh wait, that's to the north. Well, maybe we can find someone who knows people in the mines or can contact people in the mines. Or guards, if we say that we're helping, maybe they'll let us. Okay. Do I need my sword? If if you have a, a sword, I, I I hope this doesn't come to a fight. Of course. A fight. 
That's what you'd need the sword I for. I thought it'd be for cutting trees out and bushes out of the way. If that's how you want to use it, then yes, please. I'll go get my sword. Thank you. Go get that. I'll go get my um, sword. <laughs> Yeah, you make your way back. Uh, um, you were staying at the PE post, yeah. um, so Rowan makes his way back, like to there. Is there what's everyone else doing while Rowan does that? I'm going to go and talk to um, her name. I forget it. Marion. No. Adriana. That one, Adriana. The innkeeper. Yes. Mm-hmm. While while you get your sword, I'll I'll just. You want to speak to them? Okay. So the, the Daisy and Rowan are going to head back to the PE post. Anybody uh, else? Uh, well. On the, if, if there was a noise outside, that means they did get into the village. So I almost want to, um, perhaps we should speak to the guards. Um, they clearly must have noticed someone coming in or they snuck over the walls, but someone entered this village. That is now almost confirmed. I do not have a lot of faith in the guards of this village. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think they are somewhat neglectful in their duties. Absolutely. But we can uh, use that neglect to have them basically confirm it, that they have in fact been in this village. But if they neglected their duties, how would they have seen anything? Uh, They might remember us. They might remember the people that came in. Possibly? I don't know. I'm not good at this. If I was a criminal, I wouldn't come in through the front gate. Then we could investigate the walls. Uh, Would you like to investigate the walls? Would you like to come with us? Of course, that would be nice. Um, I'll, I'll have um, Percival have a look at the walls. Very perceptive. Percival, be. can be. I don't. I don't want to do it. You don't want to look. <laughs> well, no, it's work. It's just it's pers- per- what Percival. Percival, work is Percival's job. Percival, come with us. I will come with you, but I, okay. will, I will observe. As a point of learning. That's. Perceiving, but it's... absolutely, please come along with us. <laughs> Perceiving is the same as looking, though. And observing. No, because I'm. I don't want to. You'd just be closer. Try. <laughs> <if> you <look. laughs> if you're looking at the wall, but you're looking at us, looking at the wall. Look, Ophelia. Um, <clears throat> if we get to the bottom of this, then we can leave this village sooner. If I, I get the impression that that is also what you would like as well. So we would very much welcome your help, but if you would like us to just rely on Percival, we can rely Fine, on Percival. I'll help. Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Scion's blessings to you for helping us on Great that one. Father's blessing to you, Dragonborn. Is that a good thing? I don't yes. know if it is yet. Good. <sighs> so we have Gruff. Uh, Xanthius and uh, Ophelia are going to go out and examine the walls. We'll uh, the, 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 the guards! <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as you are not leaving to the south and you are not trying to head south, yeah. the guards aren't going to stop you. Um, they will probably escort you as you're sort of like close to the village and like they want to see where you're going, they probably will ask you where you're going. Um, one of them will run off and probably send words to the authorator and the captain. Are these the same guards we saw last night? Or is it no, because these are these. So all of the guards, like the, the local guards, the militia under Marshal uh, Valgra, they are basically not working. They're not on duty right now. They've been. You said the ca- <laughs> Captain Vicaro's m- yeah. men and women, the actual Duke's army. This like uh, looks like a scout battalion or maybe like a kind of skirmish battalion. They are now basically in charge. Full um, rank. The FBI yeah. have taken over the investigation again. Yes. But they're also I will take it from here. <laughs> um, not anymore, you're not. <laughs> yeah, but I would say that like uh, there is a very noticeable difference when you see these other soldiers. The soldiers in the the grey and, and orange with the the duke symbol on them and stuff. The, the proper soldiers, they are not. <laughs> investigators either they are basically like holding the gate uh they're making sure people don't go around where they're not supposed to they're more like army soldiers um they do have there seems to be a couple of them who are trackers they seem to be examining the areas around the village searching the village itself they've got these kind of like hunting lizards and things like that these hunting drakes um but the actual soldiers on the gate are just like military soldiers keep it, mainly things like control yeah halberds chainmail, you know shields and that where they need them but mostly kind of like working guards they'll stop you and just be like uh, forgive us, citizens. Can we ask where you're heading at the North Gate? Can we ask where you're heading? Are we all going? 
Uh, no, no, this is just the three of them. So Rowan and Daisy, I'll come, I'll come back to you guys in a minute. We're going to the northern wall? Uh, we were just, in, yeah, we're just investigating the wall, I suppose. Mm-hmm. So you're not actually leaving, I guess? Well, or are you going outside we're going, to look at it from the yeah. outside? We wish to walk the perimeter of the village. If you're assisting with the investigation, uh, absolutely. We'll let the authorator and captain know what you're doing. Um, we'll have one of us just escort you around. If you're just examining the perimeter, we'll have one of us examine with you. Absolutely. Of course. And uh, the looker, to the looking and the looker. Mm-hmm. You'll help us observe? Yeah. I mean, so, so we've got an observer, a watcher, and a looker. If you think that something's fine, that is a, the um, the person who who is offering themselves. <laughs> um, I'm just imagining a guard watching Ophelia, who's watching <laughs> us, who's watching the wall. Who's watching Percival, who's watching the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the chain of it. No, the guard does like, I mean, the guard is going to help. Uh, they are a... Pleasure to meet you, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm not going to get you killed in like five minutes. <laughs> and what's um, your name? They are... Oh, my name's Cade. Uh, he's like a young man. He actually looks a little bit like um, there's a little touch of elven blood, like kind of half elf. Um, uh, very, very you know, well dressed soldier, halberd. And he's like, yeah, my name's Cade. Uh, I will come with you. Uh, he Your is first uh, time in Vernal, uh, the village in, of Vernal. Yes, no, I'm I, I'm normally stationed in Ash and Rest. I'm uh, he, he's a private in the Duke's army, but he's uh, he's he's fairly well funded. Um, and normally, and you guys would know this as well, uh, when the tithing, which is like the taxation of the dragons, comes around, you have a choice. You can either provide like money, goods, or also to support a family, somebody can offer military service, and that's when you join the army and you basically cover your family's tithe by serving in the army. And, and he'll say, no, my, my family's from Ash and Rest, um, and uh, I signed up. I uh, signed up to the Duke's army. So I will admit I'm not a tracker or anything like that. I'll, I'll help you where I can. But yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a, this is my sort of first time doing this. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm mainly here to guard mm. uh, the gate. Us too. No, we're travelers too. We haven't been in Burnell long. Um, but if we find something, wonderful. It will be my job to go and inform the captain and the authority, you know, anything you find and, and things like that, and just let him know what, let them know what you're doing. Much appreciated. Yes, of course, yeah. Uh, uh, just Cade. Just Cade, yes. Uh, recruit Cade. Not a not a knight, I'm afraid, my lord. Uh, my apologies to the loss of your priestess. Oh, thank you. I I, I, I did not know the the priestess in question myself, um, but uh, I, as I understand it, she was she was quite beloved in the community in in, in the town. So, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, seems to like look at you and, and it's like, oh, this person's very unusual, but like is almost so, sort of enamoured, sort of like, oh wow, like what uh, something they've never seen before. Like they've seen a few wild hearts, they've seen Dragonborn, but like, yeah, I suppose us with our like muted tone and clothing and stuff like that. It's very standard, but... I mean, still, no! (laughs) Xanthius is, like, still stands out with the gold, and, like, Groff is also, like, from Iceheart. Like, it clearly stands out as well. I'm a frosty boy. Mm. But it's more that, like, even then, this private has probably seen people from other provinces and things like that. The, just like the face paint, the armor, the nature of like her dress and things like that, Ophelia does stand out and has all these like holy symbols that aren't common here at all. You know, it definitely is an element of like, oh, that's unusual. I mean, there's also, we're investigating some murderers. I'm from the House of Blood. <laughs> that's yeah, I mean, kind of like a, maybe. okay. <laughs> um, Rowan and Daisy, you guys go back, you grab your sword. Uh, Daisy, uh, Ariana will just uh, kind of find you. What is going on out there? We've had soldiers coming in asking all sorts of questions. I overheard that there's these criminals around. What's, what's, do you know anything? No, I was going to ask you if you knew anything, actually. I mean, I was, I was working all night. We were, we, I was here, we were serving the food and, and doing everything, and Rowan was playing the beautiful music. No, I, I know nothing. As I said, the soldiers, the same thing. I don't know anything. Did they tell you what the people looked like? Yeah, something about the a dwarf and a woman and a kobold they heard as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's disappointing. Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought maybe they would come in for a drink or something. Oh, I mean, before you arrived, we didn't see anything, anybody like that. We had the usual. Uh, the miners all came back from the mine. We served them. You know, it's just before the sun came down. They had dinner. They had some drinks. Marion was with them. Uh, they went home. Uh, you arrived. Rome was doing his music. And then that's when you and your companions arrived. Nobody else came in that night. No one else, no one else was here. Is there anything suspicious with Marion and the rest of the miners? 
No, they are a big part of the village. They've been, uh, you know, they, they provide, they work the mine. The Duke's very happy. They provides gold and, and iron and, and other, you know, occasional gemstones and things like that. Uh, it's been very profitable for, for uh, the, the village and for the Duke. Um, she's been stressed. She's been quite stressed lately. I definitely noticed as an innkeeper, you notice these things, right? You notice she comes in, she orders more drinks than she normally would, harder drinks now and then, always seems to be in a bad mood or fighting with one of the miners. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, hmm. She kind of thinks about it for a bit. I did see her uh, the other day. She was arguing with uh, the mayor, with the Reeve, uh, with uh, Lynette. She was. Uh, they were having a heated argument. And as soon as, as soon as I came by, you know, I wanted to get my ears in and have a little listen. Um, as soon as I got too close, they hushed up and you know were acting on friendly terms. I pretended not to notice. You know. We're cauldrons, we love to have a bit of an argument and a fight from now on time. You just blow off a bit of steam, you know? Um. Hmm. Interesting. You didn't get anything about what their argument was about? <sighs> there was something about money, but I, I can't remember anything else. I'm sorry. Hmm. Lynette was worried about money or something like that. I don't know. Some some business, Reeve business is... Inn's doing fine, you know. What am I to know? Yes? Can I not perform tonight? Which kind of thinks I... Well, I mean, sure, I guess if the... I mean, the army's paying for your room anyway. It's okay, I'll play. <laughs> I mean... Look, no pressure to Rowan. Like I said, the, the, in, the army's paying me for your rooms anyway, so... Whether you perform or not, I don't mind. It's up to you. If you want to, you can. If you don't, no problem. I'm bound by honor now. I will find these criminals. Wow, okay, yeah, very brave. Well, look at you, handsome fellow. I know. Yeah. I'm going to get my sword now. Okay, I really hope that's not a euphemism. Uh, <laughs> you're actually getting a sword, right? Uh, chop, chop. Yes. Okay, good. I go upstairs. Get my enormous long sword that suits a half giant. <laughs> nice. Yep. Drag it down. Yeah. Nice. I love it. roll for sword size. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the kind of. <laughs> you're gonna at one point. You're gonna you the look, look and observe squad. Um, <laughs> Yeah. The three of you, Cade and Percival, make your way outside. I don't chatter with Cade. The entire yeah, time as well. um, and you, yeah, he's just he's <laughs> like a he's a soldier. He's like you know he's got family back in Ashen's Rest. Uh, he signed up for a military service. Um, I, he's uh, I, let's, let's throw it. he's got yeah he's he's he has two dads. He's like an adopted kid, but he was raised by these two you know, two dads. They run like a little business in the in the town. Um, it wasn't doing particularly well for a few years, and when he got old enough, rather than them like they were always like struggling to meet the tithe so he signed up so that they can save up and kind of get themselves into a better position um so he signed up to military service he sounds like a good kid like he's he's young yeah, he's, he's like probably guy. like 18 17 18 like he's he's really young um and he's got like these little half elven things um you find out that yeah one of his dad his elven father is uh is uh quite melancholy and so it's been hard on the family and the business and that's why it wasn't doing so well and blah 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 little life story for Cade um, but you make your way out and you find the bit at the walls that uh, Daisy had mentioned and was like saying well this is the closest bit to the river and, and that's where the, the older man heard like some commotion and things like that um, and yeah you find beautiful green rolling hills leads up to you know the the town itself is built onto a kind of top of a hill so it slopes down so anybody kind of attacking would have a harder time um but it looks like there might have been there's like some construction work going on outside the walls that looks like they're maybe trying to create like areas where new buildings can be erected and things like that as well like they want to expand the village okay. um and build it up um but uh yeah you you make your way there i mean i think um uh, as we're as we're walking down, I'm sure everyone else is the same. With you know, I'm looking at the walls. I'm trying to find any. I suppose my initial thought is to look for recent, like broken parts of wall, or even just open, exposed areas. Sure. Um, but I, well, I can tell you, you don't see any of those. Yeah. I can tell you immediately that the wall looks fine at a quick glance. Like you don't see any holes. You don't see anything broken. Nothing like major. No major damage. Yeah. But now the construction work. That's uh, 
interesting to me. But, sure. So yeah. do you want to investigate that area and like search around that specifically? I think so, yeah. If, All right. if, if there's construction work, yeah. it's probably an exposed wall. So the way it'll work is just like, if you want to make an investigation check or a perception check, it has to be on a specific thing that you want to examine. Absolutely, basically, yeah. and Spend some time. Um, what yeah. is, before you roll, I want to yeah, check in with everyone, what is Gruff going to do? He's probably um, poking at bits of it with his staff. Mm -hmm. Which, like, the wall itself? The wall itself, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And like doing that thing, like, you know when dads are like, looking at DIY. <laughs> like, you know, like a builders come into their house to do something sure. and they're kind of just looking at it like. Mm. Good job or not, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. What kind Ooh. of grout did you use? You know, that mm. kind of thing. Like, yeah, solid nice. foundation. Yeah, yeah solid nice. foundations, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice just to examining see. it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. nice, nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for Gruff. Uh, big dad energy. Uh, what is Ophelia and Percival doing? I think Ophelia's... <laughs> she'll try to help. I think she'll probably look at the, the ground, look for any signs of disturbed earth, if anything's mm -hmm. maybe tunnelled underneath the wall. Okay. But the whole time she's like, Great Father, forgive me. Great Father, forgive me. Great Father, forgive me. Percival, come help me look. Great Father, forgive me. Great Father, forgive me. Great Father, forgive me. As she's looking around. Uh, is is she making an actual effort to look, or is it kind of like putting on the airs for these guys, or is she little actually bit, trying? A little bit of airs and graces. Sure, 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 sure. Mix. And then you want Percival to help you, or do you want Percival to, you know, what do you want Percival to I want do? Percival to come help me. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, I'm looking. Uh, <laughs> in this instance, <laughs> in this particular scenario you'll find yourself in, Percival can't really help. No. Unless he's physically interacting with it, he can't help. Um, so you're not going to get any benefit from it. Well, because there are reasons. Yes. Um, <laughs> Cade will probably help... Uh, he will help Xanthius, because Xanthius is the one who's mainly been talking to him, so he'll kind of leave Gruff alone. He'll come and help you and give you advantage. Yeah, I mean, I beckon him over. Like, yeah, 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 so you're going to get advantage yeah, roll. He's quite it's going to be an investigation check for uh, Ophelia, because you're, you're a survival or investigation cool. check I'll allow you to make. Um, it is at disadvantage because you are only kind of half... You're kind of like... <laughs> yeah, you're not committed to it. You're not committed to it. Uh, it would be investigation for Gruff, because you are, like, physically tapping mm. and searching for, like, damage and things like that. And then if you're searching, it's going to be... Don't make me roll perception again. It's going to be, like... Uh, like, you're <laughs> looking around that. the construction site for yeah, stuff, yeah. right? But you're not, like, uh, examining it. You're being helped, though, right? So you are being helped, so you get advantage. Advantage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still a fine. Well. Investigation's <laughs> actually my lowest start. Yeah. Like, yeah. All... I got a four. You said that, my dude. That was. I know. I got a nine. I didn't roll a thirteen. Nine. Okay, so that's why I'm annoyed. <laughs> so we have uh, a nine for Gruff. We have a four for Ophelia. So I'll tell you the two of you. Um, Gruff, you kind of tap around. You're examining around. You're not seeing anything. It's pretty decent. The wall's fairly well made. Um, you're like, yeah. You just don't see anything that really seems out of the ordinary. Good even proclaim. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's a wooden wall, so yeah. it's like a wooden palisade oh, wall. Good, good. So it's like good timber, basically, good timber. and it's like yeah, been nailed strong. properly. And Sealed well. Yeah, it really has. And it's quite tall. Climbing over it, it's like probably close to like 12, 13 feet, the wall. So it's quite tall. Like, it's literally designed as like a quick defense against people rushing up. Mm. You know, somebody could climb over it, but like, Eh, like they would need, they'd make a lot of noise doing it if they had tools and things like that. You know, um, it's possible, but most people, it would be a struggle. Um, they are also sharpened, the wall tips are all pointed and stuff like that. Um, so you don't find anything. Ophelia, you find nothing. You, 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 <laughs> you, you feel like this immense guilt that you you know what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. Like you shouldn't be doing this. Like, and you, I don't know if Ophelia, like, for me, I think Ophelia would just give up. Like, like, oh, yeah. yeah, like it would just be like, overwhelming, just like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, Percival. Is it, is it like a society lady? Like, ugh, yuck. <laughs> it's more like a, it's, it goes against her faith. Mm, this is like okay. against her religion yeah. to be like yeah. doing um, this. Yeah. Sure. Um, and you see Percival Where crouches down <laughs> and Percival is like patting the ground, like he's yeah. on hands and knees, like patting it. But it's just this big black floppy robe that's just kind of like... Tapping <laughs> <laughs> um, around. Amazing. Um, okay. What did we get over on Xanthus? Um Well, uh, before I tell you, it, it, how uh, good... Like, how vast is the construction area here? Is there like... It, it just looks like a, like a couple of buildings are being built. But if I... if a couple of little cottages, maybe little buildings. If we were to be weaving through this sort of area, is there a particular area in which I'd be away from the rest of the group? Just yeah. Almost just with Cade. Yeah. 
Not for any nefarious yeah, purposes. It, you, you've got enough of a distance that you're solitary, like they're not nearby. I think um, He's gonna do a murder. I would almost yeah, be like pointing things out to Caden, sort of talking to him idly, almost as a cooperative effort. Um, and I only rolled 11 for perception, mm. so probably not enough. I think there would be a moment when my ears start to ring and like the vision starts to almost flicker in my eyes again, like it did before. And if, if Kate is talking to me, like pointing out like, oh, there's this thing over here, blah, blah, blah. It's almost like muffled. Like I, I've suddenly become distant. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and you just get that. And for, for just a, like a duration until I'm able to sort of break out of it again. Okay. And I think that's that's why I feel like I rolled an okay. 11. Nice. Uh, but if that gives me anything outside of that, uh, like is 11 oh, good enough for anything? for brownie points. You search around, 11 is, you would see, there's, the only thing I would say is this, is like you get the impression you don't see any tracks or anything out of the ordinary, but like you come across like one odd site um, and it just looks like uh, some construction materials were left out, right? It looks like, you know, like some planks of wood, some you know, bits and pieces here and there. And it looks like somebody knocked over like a bag of nails. And you don't see a hammer around. Mm. That's it. That's the only thing you see. Okay. But that's it. Uh, you don't, unfortunately, look, look, observe squad. You spend some time doing this. You don't really find anything out here. Um, you guys eventually, having searched around, you're pretty confident that you've not found anything. You make your way back as Daisy and Rowan are probably making their way out as well. Cade um, uh, is like, uh, I'm really sorry. Yeah, it didn't look like there was anything. Maybe, I hate to say it. I mean, the Duke's, uh, the captain, sorry, is a good man, but like, maybe that dwarf woman's right. Maybe, maybe they didn't come here. Like, we've not found any sign that they, you know, we've looked around the walls. You know, they could have gone in the river, lost, you know, we could have lost their trail or, or anything like that. Maybe, maybe she's right. If, um, if no one truly finds anything, um, what will happen to the investigation? Will they still lock down the... Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll send the other, if they've got a force coming from, from Kalskaris, and I hear that they're bringing a sister inquisitor with them, they'll search the area and, and once the authority and sister inquisitor believe that they've exhausted everything, then they'll wrap up the investigation. It might be that they've managed to bypass the force coming from the north, they've got into the city, bounty posters will be posted. After a few days, they'll just let things get back to normal, but they'll do their best to try and capture them as, as where they can. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, that authorita, uh he's been after this dwarf and, and his companions for a while. Like they've, I heard that they've they've got a bit of a history. Uh, so he's he's oh, real intent. Oh, before the um, murder. Yeah, yeah. Just a petty criminal. You know, he's kind of a thorn in his side. Always, you know, getting up to petty crimes, getting away. You know, bribing things, that sort of stuff. He's kind of a, a minor guy. But I think there's something more to it. Like I mean, uh, there was. I've never seen somebody pursue them this hard, and they keep talking about this heresy, and it sounds like this dwarf was involved in, I think he might have been like a cultist or something like that, like the way they talk about him. But that's it. Sorry. Sorry we couldn't help. Uh, and he'll kind of lead you guys back. Um, it was worth a shot, Cade. Thank you very much for your assistance. Yes, of course. Um, uh, did you find anything? No? Good? No. All seem to be in order. Ophelia? I've committed a great sin. <laughs> uh, which is? Performing a task. <laughs> but you were just looking. Mm. Yes, you were just helping Percival, us. Percival, 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 Percival. Immediately Percival. at your side, immediately at your side. Come, 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 come. Give me your hands, give me your hands. Okay, so you watch as the robes lean up. They're still covered. Do you want to like reach in? Just, just reach in. Get okay. Hands. Yep. So the the sleeves fall back, and you see a pair of skeletal arms sticking out of the robes as Percival takes your hands. A feeling would start waltzing. Yep. Uh, and you see, <laughs> and as they begin to dance, uh, you watch as they dance. The hood of the robes pulls back enough where you just see a skull in its place. I mean, I'm like shocked looking at this and slowly like sliding over to Gruff. Uh, Gruffith? Lord Xanthius? That's a skeleton. 
first classic that Rihanna. Appears that appears to be I. And that is where we're going to end today's first episode <laughs> of Dancing Althea rough. the Dragon Empire. <laughs> I think both of us are slowly backing away. Like I don't like this one. <laughs> As we see the final shot of this episode, this beautiful but also morose as this skeleton in Blackfriars robes and Ophelia waltz uh, as the, uh, you know, the, the sun is now maybe beginning to set after the investigation is taking place as it begins to just dip down. Uh, we see them as they waltz outside the village of Burnell um, and in the far distance, in the far distance... Oh, uh, yeah, no, I'm just... Oh, God. <laughs> as they waltz... We pull away, we see the trees and the valleys, we see the mountains, and up near the mountains, we hear a blood-curdling scream. And thank you very much for joining us. We will see you <laughs> oh. for the next, the second episode. And this episode, by the way, uh, is uh, this episode first. Episode one, A World uh, a world of Stories. Uh, episode very one, A World nice. of Stories. Oh. And that is going to be episode one. We will see you for episode two. We hope you come and check it out here in Campaign 3, Althea, the Dragon Empire, here on High Rollers. Yes. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Goodbye. Oh, my see gosh. See you next time. Yes. Uh, there we go. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, thank. I want to say thank you, Rhiannon, for handing me a very lovely little cliffhanger as I kind lovely. of end things on. A lovely little <laughs> yeah, thing there. It's beautiful. Um, beautiful. Well done. <laughs> hey, uh, we got, I got a couple of quick things that I just want to say as we wrap up the episode. Um, first of all, I want to do a big thank you and shout out to some people in particular. Mm, um, yes. uh, the first people I'm going to shout out is actually going to be our very own Chris Trot and Tom Hazel. Yay! Because the amount of uh, the amount of work these guys have been doing on the intro, I don't know why I'm getting upset. <laughs> uh, the, the amount of work these guys have been doing on like the intro videos, all of the preview videos that you've seen, uh, the like working with Jolene on, on the music and the extra video, yeah. you guys have really nailed it. You have, especially this boy. The boy. Big hard. Working big out. hard. Big hey. hard on all the edits. No, I... Everyone's been doing an amazing job. Everyone's been... Ree's been doing all the social stuff. It's been amazing. We've got, like, like little clips and stuff going out as well. You know, Kim, as always, has been handling all the organization stuff with Katie as well, but Tom has been working very, very, very hard. hard. Lots yeah. of late nights. Well, huge assistance from Trump, but hey, you yes. gave me an awesome project to work on. Well, you're more than welcome. Everyone did. But yeah, big thank you to you both. Um, also, big thank you to Jolene and Mina, obviously, yeah. our composer and, and, and uh, com uh, mixer, mixer. mixer uh, for all the music that you saw as well. Um, but also uh, for our brand new logo, uh, mm -hmm. Pumpkin Art. You yes. know the name. If you're yeah. familiar with High Rollers, you'll know the name. Um, and if you're not familiar, go and check out Pumpkin's art as well. You'll find them in the Discord, Incredible. posting loads of cool art or on social media. We also have Scorpion Design uh, for doing the beautiful yes. scene art that you saw of Caldra of yep, North Vale yeah. um, in the intro. Um, so Scorpion Design, fantastic. So Thank you so much. We also have uh, Rachel Denton or Talana who did Woo our character art as well. Yes. Um, our brand new character Yay. art. Absolutely Good. fantastic job. Yes. Um, and then finally, a big thank you to Becky as well for the set yeah. uh, that we've got. Our beautiful new set. A few little improvements here and there. Look, this has been blocked the whole time. But a dragon. dragon. There's an actual dragon. 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 Lord Ignorius. Oh, we need oh, well, I mean, it could be many dukes. It's, uh, yeah, it does not have to be Duke Ignorius. Uh, we'll see. It could be a lower um, dragon. Yeah, I mean, or, or maybe it's, it's just... A dragon, yeah. Dragon. Yeah, it's it could dead. be a dragon. It's, yeah, we mounted it. Yeah. <laughs> we killed it. That would not, that would not happen heresy. in the Empire. Yeah, it would be. Um, but yeah, big thank you to everybody. It's been a huge part of like the intro and all the new art and all the new assets and things like that. Thanks to you supporters as yes, well. Yes. You made this thanks happen. to you guys. Oh, You're all in this everyone. tone. Supporting us. Oh. Your names have been recorded in By this Kim. tome here. 838 Do you yeah. want to just show a couple pages? Uh, I bolted yeah. it shut. Oh, this was, bolted oh, shut. oh, it was really bolted shut. Yeah, I'll yeah, get yeah. in here. But um, yeah, years and years ago, we did the uh, two. fundraiser two years ago. Studio we recorded. One. I can't open this. Thing. Just leave it. I'll leave oh, it. The... All your names are in here. Yeah. Um, and There's photos on Discord, I think. Yeah, and supporting us on Patreon allows us to do incredible, awesome things like the orchestra, like all of the. That like, was funded cool by that. Yeah. Having the set um, done. Having the set yeah. done. This is all thanks to supporters. So Being please, the please artists. support us on yeah. Patreon, YouTube members, or you read every episode yeah. in that yeah. book. Absolutely. That's you. That's you there. That's you, that is. <laughs> and yeah, just thank you for joining us on this first episode. We hope you've enjoyed it. So now, I'm going to disappear. Mark? Uh, Mark? Uh, Mark? Mark? Where did he go? Where did he go? Oh, ah! Mark's gone! Ah! 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 It's okay. <laughs>
What? It's okay. Why? We can take control of this, guys. Oh. Yeah. We're actually live now. <laughs> this is live <laughs> now. <laughs> That's right. We got you. Mark's We're just we, we got you, and right you, and you. And you. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. So we're, we're officially live right now. Um, there was a couple of reasons why we wanted to pre-record episode one. I'm sure you understand. We wanted to get it perfect. And also, Mark's in a castle. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Also, there's a load of fireworks going off because it's the 5th of November. No, 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 because they're celebrating us. Ah. Uh, mm. Of course. It's not Guy Fawkes Day. But anyway, <laughs> um, we want to go live and come into the studio and enjoy the episode with you all. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'd like to thank... Some people that have been gifting and been very generous. There has been some various, so, various, think... various generous, um, various things, donations and stuff. But hey, what did you think of episode one, guys? It was alright. It was alright. Right. Not bad. Yeah, it was fine. Fine. Can I just point out we pulled one of the biggest bamboozles on Scorpion Design, who did our intro animation, because <laughs> we were talking to Scorpion in our private Discord, you know, that we've been working all this stuff out in, and they were like. Oh, I know you're alive right now, but can I just ask? <laughs> and I've just seen them in chat now going, what? <laughs> <laughs> really fooled them. Sorry, Score. Sorry. Got <laughs> him. Oh, you're all, uh, I was called you uh, someone else then. <laughs> What'd you call me? <laughs> Nothing. What'd you say? Thomas. What'd you Tom, say? Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom. Okie dokie. Well, I've dribbled war, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright, the camera wasn't on you. The camera wasn't on you. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Hey, I've locked the iPad. <laughs> hey gamers, uh, it's time to thank all of our wonderful supporters and donators and uh, gifty subsies, starting with... Gifty subsies. Big Goth Booty GF, who uh, oh, yeah, yes, donated perfect start. before the stream with... Uh, <laughs> I waited to listen to Althea's theme until today, and I am Whoa. totally not tearing up. No, nope, oh, absolutely no. not. Why would you? I God, still tear I up every time. Can't yeah. wait so for good. this. It's um, on Spotify now for it's anyone on Spotify. Who, who. If you want to watch, listen to it, Jolene, spam the link in chat. There is a link. It'll be in the, If you're watching this on YouTube as well, it's in the description too. Um, well, just not of the YouTube stream, which is a thing. Anyway, uh, God, I can't wait for this. I've missed the High Rollers Sunday so much. Hi everyone, much love. Thank you. Uh, Ravager with 420, sex number. It's High Rollers time, <laughs> baby! So excited for the new campaign and can't wait to see what happens. I'm especially intrigued by Ophelia. She Ooh. reminds me of my own D&D character, Lalith, a Dampir princess dedicated to a blood goddess. Love that vampire vibe. Sounds familiar, yeah. A second one from Ravager that says, I'd like to add that I introduced you guys to a friend last year and they've binged all of Aroas over several months. And now they're super excited to watch a new campaign from the beginning, uh, yes. expanding your audience one nerd at a time. Well, hello, Ravager's friend. Welcome. <laughs> that's um, what we like. That's what we want to hear. If everyone introduced something to one other person, we double, right? That's how math works. Yeah, and then exponentially. And then you, they tell a friend. And then eventually... It's the perfect time to do it. High rollers will be universal, baby. Brand new, brand new campaign. Now's the time to ask all your friends and family and dogs and cats to watch us. My cat listened to the orchestral theme. What do they think? Shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Scathing. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> wow. Jesus. They only do that when they're really happy, though. Um, Captain Gingerkin with 15 pounder Roonies. Hi, Rollers. Sadly can't make the stream due to spending time with some with family, but uh, couldn't not get involved. Been here since the early days, and it's amazing how you've grown. We've... Uh, big boys now. Me and Tom are literally bigger characters. We're big boys now, yeah. We've yeah. all grown up. We're huge. Got all your limbs. <laughs> Got limbs and a tail. I've got an extra limb. Does that count? I don't know. We're the, we're the him bros. He broke him in a different way this time. Xantheus. Oh, yeah. yeah we um, are. Oh, no. Him bros. Him bros. <laughs> oh, no. There you go. Coined it. Coined um, it. <laughs> well done, all. I can't. Uh, uh, well done, all. And I look forward to catching up later. Heart. Uh, this is a big boy, FYI. What? Speaking of big boys, this is a big boy. Go on. Gensiferum uh, donated one thousand uh excuse pounds. me what? that's rude <laughs> that's disgusting <laughs> one thousand pounds gents if that's an error please let us know <laughs> thank you so much i won't do anything about it but <laughs> <laughs> i know i know think how many thank ptz's you, i could get one oh my gosh four half of one, one. <laughs> <laughs> um 
And uh, James Ferrum says, I say, what's all that racket outside my manor? Why, it's my favourite simpletons. Back for more delightful <laughs> japes and mummery. Yeah. Marvellous. Simply marvellous. Here, simpletons, have a shilling from my purse. Now away with you. Thank you, my lord. <laughs> Thanks, my lord. Um, we got uh, a message here from A.L. Wolf that says, what? Just ignore me. He's got to fix a light. He's got to fix a light. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> really, two two seven two donated with. I've been a vod squad lurker since the beginning of Light Four, and have grown up literally so much since then. And I can finally donate. I've curled up on my couch to watch, and I feel like I'm about to meet five new friends. So Aww. excited for campaign three. Yeah, hopefully you like your your, your new friends. Um, and if you don't tough, uh, you're stuck with them. They wow. are your friends. Yeah. Um, Carbidonia, uh, here's a small gift to celebrate the start of this adventure. I would like uh, to it's give darker. more, but I already spent a ton on Call of Cthulhu player and GM books. So instead, I offer my eternal gratitude for letting us join you on this journey. Roll on. That's on. Thank you. Tim May, uh, to a new adventure. Thank you. Dynamic Lad with a half hundo, 50 pound of Roonies. That's brighter. Uh, been around since I'm the blind. Lightfall days on the VOD squad. First time catching your live in a long time. Roll on Sundays. Thank you very much, Dynamic Lad. Smooth. Alex T <laughs> has donated with. He's stuck uh, in the curtain. <laughs> it's fine. Alex T has donated with. Hello, just want to say I'm a huge fan. I cleared my entire day to watch this premiere. Good I person. Just finished Aww. a rise, or I'm about an hour away from finishing it, I should say. Uh, it changed my life Woo! and brought me so much joy and inspiration. Thank you. Thank you, Alex T. Very lovely message. Um, Rafa Master... A bit lighter, uh, a bit dark. Rafa Master donated with... I met you with Arois and found company through hard times. So excited. Would love to play D&D with you. I created a citizen science network in the Caribbean and can give away diving and coral restoration <laughs> courses if you, finish, if you visit the Dominican Republic. You want to do that? I want to go to the Dominican sure. Republic. You want to do yeah. some diving and coral restoration courses? Yes. Hell yeah. Look forward to that I Patreon mean, update. <laughs> I'm deeply afraid of the ocean, but sure. Still chocolate. Don't steal chocolate. You've had it all this time. Chocolate. I People can't yeah. see the chocolate. This is a nightmare. Um, Vorton Gaia. With 100 pounds. Wow. Oh, wow, thank you so much. Full hundo. Hi, Rollers. I'm so excited to see this new story play out, especially with the Vault Hunter's inspiration. <laughs> Vault Hunters, maybe? I don't think so. At the time of writing this, I've only seen the character vids and already love Rees the most in design alone. Yeah, she's... Uh, she really put some effort in. She's pretty rad. Uh, thanks for helping me get into D&D. Uh, thank you very much, Vault and Gaia. Xander, tomorrow I leave for basic Navy training. First episode oh, of Campaign 3 is a perfect yeah. send-off. I hope you're still able to watch yeah. somehow. Yeah. Good luck. Or listen. Are you saluting with the tiny hand? I am. It's quite cold. Twist it. Uh, there you go. Good luck, soldier. No, um, navy or sol sol sailor? Sailor. Yeah, boats. Nice. Uh, Unfortunatalia. Uh, hi. First time dono after being here for three years. I'm still about 40 episodes behind on Aroas. That's fine. This is a new campaign. Uh, so I've got to catch up. Also, it turns out my new campaign is at six on Sunday, so sadly can't join live. Um, love you guys so much, though. That's fine. Okay. There's so many ways to catch up. So many ways. Indeed. Um, Gla oh, my good God. Glacial Raven uh, with 500 pounds. Wow. Rude. Guys. Um, Rude. Oh, this is a good bank. Right? <laughs> 500. That's that huge. Place. Thank you very much, Glacial Raven. Yeah. So excited for campaign oh, three. Oh, yeah. Been watching you guys since episode one of Lightfall. Thank you for introducing me to D&D &D and for many years of entertainment. Thank you so, so much, Glacial Thank Raven. You. That's awesome. Uh, Water22. Uh, hello, boys. Been watching for a while and I have nothing. Sorry, that's not what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just, just like, make that up? I just, I don't know, maybe my character spilled out for a second there. I have nothing. They actually said, and I have to say, this is an amazing birthday gift. Oh, um, happy birthday! Happy so thank you all so much. Thank you, Water22. I'm sure you don't have nothing. Um, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing! I don't know why I said that. Nothing's what you um, got if you ain't got something. Yeah. P.O.D. Devon. Oh, Look how bright we are now. 
Devon has donated a half hundo, 50 pounds. First live episode one. I'm binging Lightfall and started a rose halfway through, and I'm very excited to start this journey with you guys from the beginning. Yeah. You're all amazing, and Mark, you truly uh, inspire me as an oh. upstarting DM. Thank you all. He would love to hear that. I'm sure he is actually watching, by the way. Mark is in watching. His in the castle. In the castle. Crappy and I think Rhi is as well. So if you're concerned that they're not here listening to the. They've heard of Rhi and Mark. They Hi, might Rhi be in chat Mark. right now. I hope you're really proud of us right now with our tiny little hands. You get a hand too. Yeah, there's hands for there's everyone. Hands. So context Crispy has given us oh, these shit. so that we can reach minis on the tip. I think this is actually, I've given this to Rhi and I've been itching the shit out of my head. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's yours now. We'll, we'll clean it. Mm -hmm. uh, Captain Critz, um, been here since day one of Lightfall on YouTube, just caught up and finished Erois yesterday. I'm excited to see the start of the next five years live. We'll see. Um, da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba. Currently unavailable with a quarter hundo. Ah. This is a two-parter. There was another Ooh. quarter hundo, so 50 total. Hi, rollers! Forever VOD squatter here. As Sunday is a work day, but I needed to take the opportunity at the start of Campaign 3 to say a huge thank you to you all for the years of entertainment. HR D&D came at such a rough time for me D&D-wise. Uh, Lightfall came as I moved away from my TTRPG groups and to a new place with few friends. High Rollers D&D was a perfect replacement and eventually got me the groups I still play with since forming them about halfway through. Hell yeah. um, much love. Hashtag... Roll on Sundays. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm glad it's we could help in this. some way. Um, it was a four kill. Alex P uh, with 120 pounds. Oh Whoa. my gosh. Uh, and simply says, here's to a start of a great new adventure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 20. Natural 20. That was me. I Sir, blessed it. Sir T Bot. Uh, roll up. With Do not roll up. A donation that says, first time catching you live and donating, you got me into D&D, &D, and now I'm in my first campaign! Nice. Woo! Thanks for everything. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Drifter, want to say thank you for the years of joy, and also a shout out to my friend Joel, who really needs to catch up on our Rois already. Hey, Joel? Rois is dead. What's going on, it's my never, guy? It's never dead. Catch up already! Catch up. But you don't right. have to catch up to start. This okay. one. No. This oh, watch this fresh. one. Just this one episode fresh. now. Just one. New World, baby. 14. 14. Um, anonymous, a little extra, so this might be an add-on to a previous donation, but this mm. came through as anonymous. A little extra to say, Mark, you've been a constant source of inspiration for me uh, in my role as Forever DM. You've helped me to revamp and improve my storytelling and world building to no end. Thank you so much. Amazing. That's awesome. Good Marmaduke with a half hundo. Thank you. Hi, Rollers. First time watching live, so I wanted to leave my appreciation and let you know how much High Rollers has helped me through a very stressful year. So good luck on your new campaign, and may all your 20s be natural. Hey. hey. Oh, 17. 17. <laughs> um, Ophelia Stan, O negative, uh, has donated with blood for the blood god. Incredible work with the setup for this campaign, guys. Cannot wait to learn more about these characters and this world. Shout out to Akuma Elgato. I don't know if I just read something. I'm on a four with my little hand. Um, oh, God. There's, sorry, there's more coming in. Hmm? No. 16. Okay. Exiled Saint 89, already loving this new campaign, and my wife and I are going to be joining our yeah. first ever D&D &D campaign in the new year. Why? Roll on 2024. That's cool as hell. Oh, God. Uh, Newt Work Error has uh, donated with... Yeah, you're back. The characters seem great. But also, Tom, what did you do to Xanthius? Fucked him up. I'll never tell. I um, really enjoyed when, at the beginning of the episode, when all that nightmare happened. What do you do? And, and yeah, Mark was like, what do you do? And you just went, I don't fucking know! <laughs> he was describing just a nightmare to me. It was like, well, how are you going to solve this? Like, <laughs> how are you going to solve it? Yeah, you fix this! Especially <laughs> after we got such nice little wholesome interactions. Yeah. I had a nice wander around the town. Yeah. Oh Christ, he's coming. Don't. Oh, he's gonna do oh, it. It's not gonna, don't it's damage not gonna the work. table again. It's not gonna work. Don't damage the table again. Put the big tray down. Tom, please, please, please. I'm having anxiety. <laughs> oh God. I've got it. Roll it into that if you can. Um, yeah, I, I, stuff's happened to Xanthius. Are, are you gonna find out? Eventually. Um, the amount of, sorry about the claw dice. <laughs> 
no, 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 Oh, my God. Give him a D. <laughs> We're going to sit here all night, then, aren't we, Thomas? He's already well, scratched the table over this side as well. <laughs> I'm not reading anymore. Give me the D20. Give him the D20. Give me the D20. He's Put it on the shelf. Give, so it. Put it, back on Give the shelf. it. Whoa! Oh, oh, I missed go in. it. Oh, hey, it chipped in. Ten. Anyway, carry on, Tom. Tiana Zara. Uh, I'm shelf. glad I get to see you live for once. Love you guys. You're an inspiration to me. Thanks. For all the love. Uh, thank, you. thank you, all the love. Not thanks for all the love. Just Giving it love. Blends in. Nice. Um, <laughs> James donated with, it's so nice to see you all together again. It warms my heart in ways that makes the leaky eye syndrome start to kick back up. Love you all. Yeah, yeah. I am so glad we were able to actually play some D&D. Oh boy. We've missed, it. We've, missed it. We've missed it. We've missed it. We've missed it. We've missed it, yeah. Uh, Bay Feather. Hi guys, I'm so excited for more Hi Rolly, yippee! Hey, if my two buddies are watching the premiere, hi Kevin and hi Maddie. Hi Kevin and Maddie! Hi Kevin and Maddie! Hi Kevin and Maddie. Kevin and Maddie. Hello Kevin. Hi Maddie. <laughs> but you're glad to be here. <laughs> I thought I'd enunciate it, so Stay. it's really creepy. Oliverer3. Hi, is this Ophelia Delarosa? We've been trying to reach you about your body's extended life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really interested to hear more about Reese. Yeah. Whole thing. Yeah. We've like, I don't know about you guys, but I've been really good at actually not knowing anything about your characters. Nada. Well, um, I had to put together the character intros. Yeah. So Tom I know I know those things, but I mean, I know as much oh as the audience God. does. You know nothing! It is very little. I know less than the purpose. audience. Yeah, I haven't I, watched yeah. your videos because I, I haven't watched them either. I don't want to know. I also just don't, generally just don't know anything. That's yeah. true. Just yeah. generally yeah. speaking, I'm dumb as hell. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. You're not wrong. Thanks. Um, <laughs> the Psychedelic Viking with a half hundo, 50 pounds. First time watching. <laughs> First. <laughs> what the fuck? It's happened. Yeah, there what we go. That? First there it is. time watching a live episode since the second Lightfall episode in 2016. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Thanks for all the entertainment over the years whilst touring. Um, <coughs> touring? Sure. Dragon Knight. <laughs> Found your channel from the BG3 voice actors campaign. I started watching your second campaign and fell in love with it. Three weeks of binge watching and up to episode 76. Whoa, that's a that's good an God. effort. That's a good, chomp. Good, good effort. Good job. Best thing I have watched slash listened to. Absolutely amazing. Well, hopefully oh, Althea takes the cake. Was that 20? It was. Is it? It is. You did no, it's it. It's a 15. Rosewitch44, donating quickly in the break. Uh, in the break. Uh, before Ooh. I get ensnared by the story again, I'm in love already with Gruff's sincerity Aww. and Rowan's compassion and empathy. Also, I'm intrigued by the world. Here's to many high rolls. I don't think we actually did great with rolling this. No, Rowan, kill people. We got the 2121 on Insight. <laughs> we did, with a matching 21. I just loved it because I could see you getting so excited because you're like, yeah, I've got one, I've got Kim. And I was just like... This is where I win. And I was like... Oh, no, no. Got charisma? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll never, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say what I'm good at. I'm, <laughs> I'm not revealing my class. <laughs> I'm a big cat. Of course I'm we don't have charismatic. Classes. We don't have classes. This is a class. Yeah, this is, is, this is the classes. This campaign. is all character What class are you? We, we're not classes. Yeah. We're trying to use... Most system. of your theories are wrong. I'm level zero. Oh. I've got Enjoy. no HP. <laughs> we don't level up. We level down. I yeah. took a level of everything. Um, hey. Crispy. Uh, with two hundred pounds. Crispy! There, there they are. The Crispy double gave us these hands, hundred. by the way. Yeah. This yeah. is Crispy's fault. Give I'm Crispy a hand! Welcome back. You've been sorely missed. A wonderful start to the new campaign. Love the new characters and can't wait to see where the story goes. Thank you very much, Crispy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Crispy. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you, Crispy. Crispy. Can you give me the big dice? I just want to see. No, I don't. if it fits oh. in the dice jail. It doesn't fit in the dice Chris, jail. Chris, we got us a dice jail but that's bigger because our current dice jail is too small. It doesn't fit. <sighs> it doesn't fit. Oh, well. It does, though, look like something out of the crystal maze. It's, it's pretty cool. It does. Bum, 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 <laughs> oh, my bum, God. Bum, bum, bum. 
regular sized dice for the dice cage. Oh, can we do a crystal maze where when you go into that vat which has all the floating like things, it's actually just loads of D20. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> or D4s, even worse. You have to catch all the natural 20s. Well, ow, 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 ow! My um, eyes! The amount of wind you'd need to generate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be insane. <laughs> um, he was bludgeoned to death by a <laughs> gothic D twenties. Gothic Kitty thirteen thirteen. Loving this so far. Everyone is my favourite. Yeah. Here's to a long and successful campaign three. Thank you very much. But especially me, Gothic Kitty, right? Everyone. Everyone. Spinach He's has donated brilliant. with. So happy you're back. I've been listening to the Althea theme on loop for the whole week. Me too. Mm, it's mm, gorgeous. Mm, mm, mm. Listen to it on Spotify right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Add it to your playlist. Just search Althea. I think. I haven't tried Look it. Look for it. Jolene Core and Jolene Core, K H O R. Of amazing music. Link in there chat. Is, is, is Link in the chat. video description. Links um, everywhere. Fail has donated with Woo! Fail. New campaign. Exciting times. Fail, go and have fun at a castle. Fail was uh, very prominent in the fan art video in the break as of well. Of course. Thank as you all for submitting fan art, by the yes. way. Um, that was a very quick turnaround. Oh, wow, <laughs> quick. You guys seeing the Holy character crap, reveals yes. too. Yeah. Uh, appearing in the episode one. I'm Incredible. so glad we could celebrate your art in the first episode. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tower, hi Roland. <laughs> the start of a new campaign, a new adventure with wonderful new characters. Characters? <laughs> uh, in an already amazing world. Sadly, I have to miss the first stream. Here is a small dono towards one of the best D&D &D streams ever. even here? Uh, excited Thank for the volume. Incredible. Thank you for the message. Anyway, here, 82. Um, has uh, donated with name? Welcome Back. Hi, Rollers. Can you say that name again? Here. Yeah. It's H I E I. How else would you pronounce it? Of course. Hi. Hi. I don't know. Do the yeah. first one again. Here. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, oh, good. God in heaven, have mercy, ponce my soul, for I am a Ponced. sinner and do not deserve this. <laughs> um, oh! 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 Boom! Yeah! Wasted it. <laughs> um, we have a lot of energy. We're excited. Too. Hey, gamers. The GG yes. wizard is here. Oh. To wish us all a big GG by donating £500. Oh, my what? Good. Uh, Giddy up. That, that is a GG wizzy. 500 pounds um, And they say, That's I'm loving. PTZ. Another PTZ. Uh, I'm loving this first voice. episode. The world is fascinating, and I love everyone's characters. Looking forward to what happens next and learning more about the world. Holy. Thank you so much. So kind. Huge. Thank very you very kind. much. Hard to even process. Fathom. Yes. Mm. Also, this they're a wizard. A they're a wizard. The GG wizard. The GG wizard. Do you know Zimzam? Gang gang wizard. Gang gang. <laughs> gang gang. Uh, Peggles, another prominent uh, member of the fan, fan art community. Awesome. Yes. Uh, with a quarter hundo, you've truly D and D'd. An absolute kicker start to C3. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. I was, for a while there, I was thinking. I don't think I've D&D'd, &D, but then I... Then we D&D'd hard. Then I D&D'd hard. I D&D'd uh, all over this table. Recall. Yeah. Recall. <laughs> recall. Um, recall with 300 pounds. Excuse me. Oh my God. Recall what? Rude. <laughs> Just disgraceful at this point. They yeah. gift like 100 as well. Oh, uh, gift subbies. Subbies. There's, there's, there's many subbies. gifts. There's burgeoning subbies. Lots of gift subs don't today. Don't say burgeoning. It takes me back to my perception. Which I've lost. Nerfed. Nerfed. I've been nerfed. You've seen nothing. Uh, I've been nerfed hard, I can tell you that much. Recall, uh, yeah, 300 pounds. Uh, this is Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Recall. I'm already in love with Ophelia. Yeah. Ophelia's pretty, She's pretty damn great. Um, I'll say. Kind of jelly. Kind of mm. jelly. You know, when you're jealous of another person's character, you mm. just want to be them. I feel that for mm. basically all your characters. Aww. That's how I feel I about you. I think you've got a really you. strong group. <laughs> I, just, I love our group. I think we've got a really strong group. Like, I, don't, we, yeah. I don't think I have a favourite. I think everyone's so so lovely and unique and... I'm I'm so into yeah. everyone else's characters. When we I did, like, it. the Session Zero, like, I just felt myself falling in love with everyone. Yeah. I was like, Whoa. It felt like we gelled really well. You wait for the romance. Mm. Me and Zan. <laughs> 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 We're not, so we're not gonna, we can't release Session Zero the because uh, yes. Session Zero is just all fun. <laughs> yeah, God. X rayed. We rolled like <laughs> gods as well. <laughs> 20, 20, 20. <laughs> 25. Death saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Arlen. 
Arlen donated with a phenomenal episode, everyone. I've been here since the very first episode of Campaign 1, and it's so exciting to see how far High Rollers has come. I can't... <laughs> you, wait. you wish you saw Session Zero. <laughs> no. I can't wait to see what new discoveries are waiting to be uncovered in Althea. Same as bruh. Um, oh, uh, GG Wizard said that they do know Zim Zam and he has wronged them too. Oh. oh, well, we'll find them. Don't worry. Wizard fight! No Wizard fight! He's multiversal. Uh, Eve with uh, 20 pounder Roonies. What an episode. All the love. All of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's a lot to give. It's a lot. Uh, Koo Cat. Uh, hey, hi, Rollers. I've been watching Aroa since a few min. Me. <laughs> A few right months after it started <laughs> and have only just been able to watch a session live now. Can't wait to see your adventures in Althea. Hey. Welcome. Welcome. Um, and thank you for the donation. Squidzilla. Hey, guys. Doing a watch party with my friends Logan Aww. and Owen. Shout out to them. Hi, Logan. Logan and Hello, Owen. Owen. Um, you can thank Matthew for that, that donation. Hi, Jacob Matthew. Chickpea. I'm loving the new characters, especially Rowan, Daisy, Ophelia, Gruff, and Xanthius. Those wow. are my favourites, Those too. are my favourites. Wait a minute, that's all of them. They're all so great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I like the Arbiter, uh, Authorator. Yeah, a reporter. <laughs> We're um, going deep into Halo Arbiter. 2 lore. <laughs> Zekus. Stop using Reese as a scratcher. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have to clean those. <laughs> I got um, Shaka6331 with a half hundo. Thank you. Thank so, you. so happy to be able to be here for the start of a campaign. Started a rose back in May and finished in September. That's a good turnaround. Well done. Excited to go on another emotional roller coaster. Thank you very much, Shaka. Oh, yeah. Things Shaka. are nice and rosy right now. Um, so nice. Yet another Alex has donated with thank you for an amazing start of the campaign. Everyone intrigues me. But also, I wonder what in the world is going on with our golden boy Xanthius. So curious. Yeah. Can't wait for the next session. Love to everyone. I'll never tell. He will at some point. Gruff's really worried about him. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Skylark <laughs> has donated. This is twice for... No, three times. <gasps> Uh, for about ninety pounds, I can't do maths. I really shouldn't have given you those. <laughs> Your mouth. I love it though. I I was scratching my cat's head with it, and he was very confused. Skylark, <laughs> um, almost hundo. Uh, been watching since near the end of Lightfall, but haven't been able to watch live since several episodes into Arois, and I only managed mm. to catch up to the Vortensar arc in Arois. Mm. After only being at Horizon when you through. finished Horizon. Yeah, it's pretty third fun. act. Well, just before um, third act. Ran out of room in my first message, but also you were all my introduction to D&D, &D, which has become such a major part of my life with all your characters having such a big influence on me, myself, and how I play D&D. &D. And Mark has influenced my DMing so much. Oh. Uh, also, I love all your characters in this campaign so much I can't choose a favourite. How they evolve is going to be amazing to see. It's also, the choice not to show your character sheets is a great one. Figuring out the cl the classes in chat was amazing. What's a character sheet? Yeah, we, we're just rolling from... Well, there's stuff in our character sheets that we want to keep private. We yes. don't have um, them. There is. Also, um, it was mentioned where people first started watching us. I want to say a big shout out to everyone that's given us a chance since the Baldur's Gate 3 um, and it's like, yeah. I'll give these guys a go. And uh, this is what you get. I, I'm really thankful <laughs> This is for what you, you get. get. <laughs> this is what you deserve. You get small hands and chaos and you'll like it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so if you, if you did join us from Baldur's Gate, that's awesome. Thanks for sticking Thank around. You. And uh, just enjoying Mark's DMing so much that you thought, yeah. I want to see that again. Shame but more, but better. Exploding in a cloud of smoke. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone now. Okay. Episode two is going to be DMed by me. There is no Mark. There is only Bing Bong. <laughs> As it should be. I'm worried that Bing Bong is multiversal too now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Villo with a half hundo. I'm excited to see what happens in this campaign. Thank you very much. Oh my god. What? It's Awkward Dog Boner. What? No, oh, no way. Oh, they're back. <laughs> I missed you, bud. Welcome back, Awkward Dog Boner. <laughs> There once was a dog with a boner oh, God. who has come back to their high roller's owner. <laughs> Forgive me for it's been a while. I'll try to come back and be virile. <laughs> there it is. 
Percival is one big boner. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes. Hashtag bone on Sunday. It's back. Yeah, that's how we know we're back. We're back on the good timeline. This yes. Is, this is it. To any new viewers, okay. Everything is you're back to be normal. You're going to but it's fine. You're going to hear that. You're going to hear some awkward dog. Wonderful words. limericks, yeah. amazing poems. Um, thank Just... you very much, Awkward Dog Bono. So happy to have you back. <laughs> Return of the King. Three, just been blessed. That's <laughs> it. Blessed. It, 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 it can't get better than this. It can't get better than this. That's like Return of the King. <laughs> 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 Hashtag Bone on Sunday. Um, Blackbird, already deeply in love with all the characters, can't wait to learn all their dirty little secrets. Mm. Mm. Um, Adam. Uh, Adam has donated with Adam. Adam. Adam! An amazing start to campaign three. First time watching live. Got up at 4 a.m. in Australia Whoa. so I could watch the first episode live. Good Lord. Um, thank sweet. you for all the fantastic D&D content. Thank you for your dedication yes. to waking up at stupid o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Sorry we can't accommodate everyone's That's time. That's Tom's bedtime, actually, to yeah. be fair. Yeah. That's I'm I thinking of ways to, you know... Accommodate more time zones. Like we're re on. we're working non-stop on it. streaming. Just over and we over. We live again. here now. Twenty four. Speaking hours. of, we're happy to announce that episode two starts now. This is that's not true. Two. That's not true. We're in Don't it confuse right now. Our awkward dog boners out there. <laughs> Just that one. Um, Omega Sama, the wonderful Omega Sama, incredible with artwork. A Such hundo. insane artwork. Mm. Thank you, mm -hmm. um, Daisy. It was incredible. Great new start to a new campaign. So happy to have new campaign. <laughs> campaign. Which is what was actually written there. Cool. Uh, so happy to have new characters to get to know and draw. Roll well. I'll try. Um, Griffin donated a quarter hundo. Thank you. I have been watching Aroas for the past two weeks and I'm on 77. Two weeks. 77? 77. Two what weeks. What speed? Yeah, yes. we're talking yeah. quad speed Are you here? on like 1.5? 1. 1. 1. Yeah. 1.75? Um, I am so glad to see the show live for the first time in a while. Thank you very much. That's nuts. <laughs> Helper bot. Ooh, ooh. So, ooh, ooh. Uh, limp jellyfish with a half hundo. Another refugee from the Baldur's Gate 3 one-shot. Hey! Um, loved you. Mark and wanted to see more of his DMing and then watched the Lord of the Rings videos and came to really enjoy all of you. So glad to be here. We'll be sticking around and couldn't be more excited. Thank, oh, you. thank, thank you very you. much. That is so nice to hear. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you enjoyed Mark's DMing and the Baldur's Gate thing, like I said after the stream last time, you've seen nothing. Probably going to be gets, gets, adorable things the whole good. way through that you can get really attached to. When Mark makes his own world he, uh, uh, and is fully immersed in that, that's peak Mark. Yeah, he gets, this he gets is This is it, Althea. <coughs> Fucking rad. The intro was great. I love the intro. Yeah. With with the kind of setting and, and to this, yeah. episode one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Real Pretty cool. Um, and I believe that is <coughs> all it's the... <laughs> So, so quality streams. Welcome, Baldur's Gate people. <laughs> I like how people are um, like, when Mark's away, it's chaos. Now he's not any help <laughs> in this situation. He's normally the one he with was the here. Be, it would be just as bad. I just can't believe Katie did that. But we also someone had shit my pants. <laughs> someone <laughs> shit my pants. Someone <laughs> help! Someone has shit in my pants. Someone came into my room last night and shit my pants. Oh man! Is it awkward dog boner? <laughs> we also had just a <laughs> metric dick ton of gifted subs as well. <laughs> metric. There were a lot. Thank um, you so much. So. If you were gifted a sub from Jayagon, Muses Wim, Being Wolfie, Andrew September 17, Nerocked, Kingfisher 9000, Ellis Day 98, Descent of Doubt, Crispy, Medley, Anxiety Statement, Bubba Dubba, Sway Cargan, Rapidly Rena, Sun Tiger 745, Dead Logan, New Plays Games, Pancake Lai, CC Solis, Cats oh Meow, God. Son of Torment, Hyper LR, Orion, Valana, Protect the Tiny Gay, I Dunny Ken, <laughs> Mac Winster, Ox Empire, Delta Blaze, Ligaratus, Ekis, Ekis972, Mayvow, Dimavarian, Drunk Pally, Floka Barma, <laughs> Ultra Wait, Space these are Marine. All people that have gifted some. Gifted. This is Barathol, Crystal Sword, Limp Jellyfish, Pixel Uncle, Mensef, Unicorn Dude, Crizzy29, Spirit. Bruce Lake, Prime Meridan X, Neroct again, uh, here, 82, Recall, yeah. or Ale Wolf. Say thanks. Thank you oh so much. Oh my god. 
That's a lot. That's um, a lot that's of not, people gifting that's subs. That's not people Sweet. gifting individual subs, by the way. There's there's that's tens, there's fifties, there's twenties, there's hundreds in there. Like Jesus. Recall gifted a hundred subs and then some others as well. If I'm if I miss some holy shit. So, uh, so um, many gifted subs. With your free gifted sub, first of all, first rule is to thank the person that gifted it to you. And use make some sure emotes. you do that. Then use the emotes, of use course. Use the emotes. And then join our Discord. Because mm. if you link your Discord with Twitch, that little sub gains you access to our extra videos. That's true, like it does. And the scene stuff, you've been granted an entry. Yep, the Patreon on. <laughs> Patreon and YouTube members and Twitch subs all get access to the same videos. It's just, if you're a Twitch sub, you get access to it through Discord. So link it, join it, watch all of our behind yeah. the scenes content. Also... Can we PTZ that? Trust got, trust got, trust got, trust got ink. Yeah. Um, so yeah, <coughs> please do join us on any of those uh, those methods of supporting us. It would mean the world to us. It allows us to do all of these incredible things: the set, the studio, the orchestra, all the character video intros. Everything that we do is is supported by you, yep. uh, and is only made possible That's by you. you. So please do support us uh, where possible, and also. <laughs> Take a look, look at, that. at that! It's insane. That's He's got Lucius on his arm! My um, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Can you make him talk? <laughs> oh, it's still in its itchy phase. I should have done that. Oh, you yeah. should have done that. Uh, should have done that. Um, so, yeah, please support us any way you know how. And if you can't support us financially, tell your friends. Tell Send your the friends. message out there. A brand new campaign has just begun, and you need to watch it, is the message you should say. Uh, and end that with. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just to really Just to seal cement the deal, that you know? one in there. Um, if you thought so, episode one was stellar, mm. this is like... Stella! This, this is, is the beginning. This is low energy. Mm. The yeah. pace of the story is just going to exponentially go that way. Yeah. It's going to kick off. This is a graph of oh, how... Wait, no, that's out. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> This is how it goes. We're at episode one right now. Just wait until episode Ooh. two. <laughs> episode two next week, Sunday. Sunday at 5 p.m. GMT. Sorry about the Americans that had to deal with time zone changing. Yeah. This week. Yeah. It's in the Twitch schedule. It's going to be on the YouTube schedule. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for joining us for episode one. You're the best. I love you. Um, and I'd die for you. He would. Oh, cool. Certainly would. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. Live on stream. <laughs> Well, you've got to monetize it. Yeah, I've got to get those yeah, clip yeah. views. <laughs> <laughs> See you all for episode two, everybody. Bye, everyone. Big Thank love you so to you all. Us. Thank you for coming. Happy three is there. We're here. Yeah. 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 I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. 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 I'm so tired. Yeah. 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 Yeah.